Slides Lords. I'm 22 and Danny Mullen. We in this. Uh, so basically... I'd like to formally accuse <sighs> Flacco of misconduct. Oh, my God. More Flacco content. <laughs> this is just what we need. I just got done explaining the poetic Flacco tale of what happened on the Monday show slash today's Tuesday news show. And it, it, if you want to watch the news segment, it's the one titled Dana White uh, beat up his wife or whatever. We just ended up the basically, Flacco show just exploded, man. I don't know. Basically, two guys who I know were pacing around with their shirts off in the rain, <laughs> thinking about fighting each other last night. <laughs> their shirts weren't even off. No, that was this morning. This morning? This was a, a morning brawl that nearly took place. What a way to ring in the new year. That's what I'm saying. Because, you know, you want to start off on a nice, steady pace at the yes. beginning of the year. You want, like, your your first Monday through Friday of the new year to be, like, eating healthy, working out, like, doing the right stuff. And instead, I'm dealing with Flacco beefing with Lush, and then I'm also going to an adult convention called the AVN Expo tomorrow for five days. I just got tested just in case any freak shit pops off. And if this freak pops off would it be strictly extracurricular no content no it would almost always be content it would definitely just be like if we met a girl and we wanted to work together we would just do it dude i'm telling you right now your 2023 is looking bleak <laughs> if you started off in this manner yeah i mean you just start off by saying that you want to you know be working out be working hard waking up early mm. you're going to the city of sin yeah on the first, you're not even waiting for the weekend. Going you're to going the out most, during a work week. The most debaucherous environment that I could possibly inject myself into. But I'm not going to like really be like, okay, I have a pretty basic view of how I'm going to spend my time at the Adult Expo. I'm going to go there for like the three hours a day that we have to be there at the browser's booth, try to make content. We're going to have a regular filmer and a TikTok type filmer. We're going to have an editor on hand so we can sort of just try to get these moments of interesting stuff for TikTok, for, uh, you know, social media in general, everything like that. Uh, but at the same time, it's like just going there knowing that this is clearly a clout slash content opportunity for so many people. It's kind of overwhelming just knowing that I'm going to be walking into this environment and it's just going to be so many YouTuber pieces of shit just trying to make something happen out here. And I'm one of them. Yes. And I'm like... You're not I'm one coming of them. In, no, but no. I'm coming in with like the most baggage and the most expectation of me being able to do a good job covering this event and we have multiple aims where we want to do a youtube vlog but then we also want to do the tiktoks and the reels but then also on top of that we don't want to get demonetized or booted off of social media no. which is always a very real possibility when you're at an adult convention it's always such a possibility it's the battle i constantly am engaging in like say when we did the porn video with kazumi on my youtube channel where it was revealed that king croc was going to go into hiding. Yes. Well, that, that happened afterwards. That was his swan song, his mm. swan suck, if you will, because he did a lot more getting sucked than doing any f yeah. But yeah, it's like, yeah, I would love to promote this clip of my girlfriend playing with Kazumi's and it'll make me a lot of money on Patreon. But what are the overlords of YouTube going to think? You're dealing with the same dilemma this weekend. But was that video monetized? Yeah. Because I feel I like... stuck it by him. Yeah, you, you, you blur out everything. It's the same way, dude... That video almighty beating the kid up? It looked like you were right there. No, that was me representing the analytics. That one went stupid because we just had this good sense to blur the exact moment that he started beating the dude up. And really nobody complained because people just kind of know the rules of YouTube at this point, you know? Yeah. And then we put the raw version on Twitter where it was also had a warning applied to it and you weren't basically able to view it unless you were logged in. But it still got like 18 million views. That was very responsible, uh, the warning. But Adam, yeah. to back this up to the porn convention, because I want to I want to hear about this. Oh, and, and so the schedule is go there for like three hours during the day, do this meet and greet thing. Tomorrow on Wednesday. Yeah, the and, and Thursday January. and Friday, and then Saturday is like do stuff, and then there's the award show at night. So, how many days is it going to take before I'm over hanging out in this convention center? That is a real question because I've been to a lot of conventions and I'm always over it after day one. But I feel like this is the environment I need to put myself into. I need to meet and mingle with the fans. I need to meet and mingle with the girls that I might be this year oh, you know yeah. make as many connections as possible and then also just going out at night now the question is can i go out at night and be surrounded by people who are shoveling 
up their nose and not feel the need to partake. Because I haven't done coke in like four years, I believe. And if you do, if the dam breaks down and you start snorting a little bit of the powder, that's really going to be the final nail in the coffin of 2023 for you. Oh, yeah. How could I possibly do anything good throughout the rest of the year if I started out like that? Yeah. This sounds so depressing to me, what you're describing. We talked about this a little bit before the mics heated off. You're going to walk by all the shit. It's going to be... A combination of YouTubers who have like 100,000 subscribers, but it's also going to be all the way on down to the kid who has a little voice memo recorder that you're supposed to be using in algebra class to make sure you get everything you're... He's going to be holding that up in Alexis, Texas's face. <laughs> and he face. wants to do a 45-minute interview with me. <laughs> uh, what What's your favorite uh, sexual position, Mr. Adam22? Yeah. Uh, uh, how, 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 how can somebody break into the business? That's why I've already laid down a ground rule where I said... I am not doing any sit down content while I'm there. Oh, I'm, not no. go, I'm not going on anyone's podcast. Never. I'm not like everybody wanted me to do podcasts there. I'm like, I'm going to maximize the things that I can't do anywhere else and, and, and try to emphasize that rather than like do podcasts there. Like what the fuck's the point? Like I can do that here. That's what I do for a living all the time. If I'm going to this convention, I would rather focus in on mixing and mingling with the new girls but now this is the kind of weird thing about it is that everybody that you look at and they look back at you you don't know what they're thinking because on one hand they could be thinking oh he's popping or he, he's doing something that's quite popular in the adult industry so i like him he's cool he's a great guy shout out to him shout out to his girl i think they're great then there's also some extent to which you just wonder if people are hating on you because it's like realistically we're only going to be able to have a small percentage of human beings on fucking plug talk, right? And you just kind of wonder, like, is everybody else sort of salty? Like, in particular, the girls who DM'd me and I didn't respond or anything, because there's a lot of that. There's a lot of people that I've really left on read this year since plug talk going on. A lot of women in the industry have DM'd you basically saying, hey, I'll do anything. I'll pay <laughs> you. I'll eat your ass. What do I have to do to get fucked by you and your fiance on the couch? Yeah. Girls have been begging you for that. Now well, think about uh, that maybe for a second. Begging. Think about it. I mean, Mike, can you imagine a scenario in which women are begging to get fucked by you on a couch? You can't imagine that. Because you're a fucking loser. But it's different because it, it's it's a business arrangement. Like somebody said in our, our No Jumper group chat the other day, they're like, who has the most hoes in this group chat? That, that, this is real things that get discussed in our group chat. Who are the top three people who, who got podium? I don't know how specific we got with it but my response was i don't need to be in contention here all of my sex partners besides one are business arrangements yeah now i'm sure a good chunk of them would want to do it regardless but it's on camera oh, nice. they stand to make money off it it's not i can't count it it doesn't it, it says nothing about my prowess with women and then you mentioned there are a lot of women who you're leaving on the uh the kitchen floor whatever the expression is who does Adam 22 have his sights set on to I don't know in 2023 I have no idea I don't, you, I don't know. you know that was kind of a douchey move There's a couple couple chicks from back in the day who I like you're trying to get on plug talk no there's like a girl who, there's a girl who comes to mind who me and Lena hooked up with when she was probably like 20 and she was skinny she's fat now she's not fat because she took the fat and she put it in her ass. Mm. And then she got some fake titties too. Mm. And I keep seeing her. And I'm like, you know, it's like six years later. Mm -hmm. We hooked up with her like right when me and Lena met. Mm -hmm. And now she's like doing whatever. I would love to get in there. But I DM'd her. I shot my shot. No response. You know who? Maybe I'll see her there and I could put it right in front of her face. Hey, so you want to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, wag that cock of yours. <laughs> Just like sort of box her in. You want to fuck? Huh? And if you, uh, it'd be nice if you've gotten some like penile extension work done. So you could be like, hey, your ass is big now. That would be the else? equivalent of me doing what she did. Yeah. Yeah. I've thought about it. When we did that porn video with Kazumi and Croc, we talked to a girl out in front of the testing center who said the first scene she did with was, was with a guy who got the injections into his dick to make it girthier. Mm. And that is right now, they're still working the kinks out, okay? That right now is what a hair transplant was 20 years ago. But 20 years from now, I'm going to be thinking seriously about that girth increase surgery. Mm. I'm going to be thinking about it. I think about it all the time because I just see dudes with gigantic fucking dicks and I just wonder, like, is it real or is it not?
Because I know some of them aren't real, but I lack the ability to tell you which ones are which. Cocks have been getting bigger too, dude. I took a, I stepped away from porn for a little bit, but then my chick, she's up in Northern California right now, and it has just been a fucking jizz fest. What are you talking on about? On my couch. Well, I've been jerking off a lot. Oh. What do you think like, I was trying to figure out what you were saying? Like, you're talking about cheating on your girlfriend here? Okay. Well, I said cocks are getting bigger. So, uh, if you thought that, you'd probably think I was cheating on her with men. But no, dude, I've been watching porn. And after I stepped away from porn for like a month, I came back and I like the average cock has increased by like one inch in circumference, it seems. It's really what you're clicking on. You, you got to hit up blocked because I feel like they probably have like. That'll the, be great for my self esteem. Well, no, but they have the biggest dicks probably on average. Because it's a site that's based around just like big black dicks. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Yeah. But that's the problem. Whoever they got is probably near the top of the leaderboard. They got some pretty big cocks in there. You know what cock is big when it's physically impossible for it to get fully hard? You ever see that? No. Where a guy like... Uh, like uh, I've seen this one black dude on the aforementioned black website. <laughs> he had sex with a skinny white college girl and his penis looked like a dead iguana i've seen I've, I've seen i think the effect that you're basically referring to which is that like some of these guys seem to have so much artificial goop pumped into their penises that the line between the dick being hard and not hard seems kind of blurry because there's some guys out there who like don't have the biggest dick who are really trying to pull it off and then there's other dudes who just have huge dicks and maybe they also have done something to it but I don't, I don't know. I would like to get deeper into my knowledge of what people are doing to their penises because I feel like most of the girls are in the dark too, and I've never had a dude really admit to it with me. The surgery. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to be your storyline for this weekend, buddy. Find a fake cock. Find a fake cock and bring him onto the plug talk catch. That could be a good TikTok. Adam22 hunts for the biggest fake cock in Vegas. I watched a documentary on the cock surgeries. And the thing is... Uh, I watched like a Vice video, I think. I was curious as well. There's really no ceiling on how big they can make those fuckers. Like, as far as girth, like, they made this one guy's... Co it looked like if... Uh, his penis looked like if a snake swallowed a cantaloupe. Mm. And there was just this giant bulge <laughs> yeah. in the middle of girth. See, that's what I would be scared of. <laughs> it wasn't good. And, but the, and you know what the other thing is, too, is I follow this one porn star on Twitter that I'm pretty sure is, like, photoshopping the fuck out of his pictures with his dick. And it looked, the photos look kind of crazy. It, is, it just looks like a serpent. Like, it's the gnarliest looking thing. Have you seen White Lotus? No. There's some cock in there? I saw you tweeting about it. Well, there's a moment where one of the characters is... You get to see, like, you get to know these two characters for, like, multiple episodes, and then there's just a scene where, surprise, you get to see one eating the other's ass. Chicks, dudes? Dudes. Two gay guys. Yeah. One of them might not even be gay. It was hard to tell. What? How does Hollywood these days depict an ass-eating scene? It was so funny. It's just, like, the one dude just standing there, and the other dude just, you know, on his knees, just face in the guy's butt. But, I mean, think about, like, how easy it is to get sued on, on like a movie set or whatever for, for sexual harassment. And then think about like this scene. How many different like directors and coordinators did they have on set? Like what did they do? Like couldn't you imagine them sort of like, I don't know, putting some kind of like guard between the ass and the other person's face to help eliminate the chance of a lawsuit, something Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. And you know there was a guy who was just there with a clipboard mm. who like graduated from Berkeley. Yeah. Who just who has to be there. A diversity officer or something. And there's even there's another scene in it where one of the characters thinks that he has uh, cancer in his balls and he's showing it to somebody and it's like you see his full dick and balls. But it kind of looked fake to me. I'm pretty sure like it makes more sense that it would be fake than it would be real. So I'm pretty sure that like this actor, like that's a weird feeling, right? You're an actor. Nobody's ever seen your penis. And now you have a scene in a very popular TV show where it appears that you are showing your dick and balls to the camera. It's not actually your dick and balls. The world has still not seen your dick and balls. I mean, that's just like kind of a funky dynamic, right? Now, if it was me, I would just be like, I'll just take my dick out. Although also like- The I world think, has seen your dick and balls. But I think he was hard. And that would be the problem. It's just staying hard on the set is going to be super fucking awkward. You probably have to do multiple takes of this exact thing. And you're in front of 20 people. 
I mean, what a better thing for a guy, though. If they make him a prosthetic penis, if you can get in with the prop master and be like, hey, psst, Bruce, what do you want? <laughs> Slip him a Benjamin. Add a extra couple inches for yeah, me there. Jack that think? thing up a bit. Hey, jack that thing up a bit. What do you think? What do you th- have you heard of the gentleman <sighs> Danny D? I think he's going to be uh, present at the conference in Vegas this mm-hmm. week. Uh, here's a picture of his penis. Can we match these dimensions? And then, boom, for the rest of your career, people are going to be like, well, we think it was fake, but we can't be sure. But see that? Okay. I was thinking about him the other day for some reason. Danny D? Danny D. I was thinking about him just because I feel like he might be the biggest white dick. Porn legend. Right. And so the only reason I was thinking about that, and I have no idea if he's enhanced his shit or not. I wouldn't even know how to tell. Unless, unless there was something so. weird about it, I wouldn't be able to tell, right? So No, because the enhancements, all you can get in terms of length is about an inch. Yeah. And it's because they cut two ligaments in your groin Heard that make your penis this. hang lower. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, his cock is literally a foot long, I think. So there's no way that's surgically enhanced. But say he's the biggest white dick. And then when you think about the biggest black day, it's it's way bigger. And then so that made me actually, I texted Kazumi. And I said, Kazumi, have you ever seen an Asian guy with a truly big dick? What'd she say? She said that she's seen some some good ones. But no, not, not like that. <sighs> and you would assume that Kazumi realistically, between her OnlyFans and her gangbang days... Mm-hmm. She's probably seen like nearly all of the cocks in the world mm-hmm. in in Southern California. At least she's probably seen mm-hmm. nearly every cock. So I, I feel like she probably has. Now listen, if there is an Asian dude out here out there who's ready to get into porn, he's got a nine incher on him. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Mm-hmm. She says it's not really the case. And I just think that's like so mind blowing that there's this big of a difference between dicks. And I'm, I'm sorry to the fans who are wondering why we're making this all about dicks i swear we have other things to talk well, about this but is, this is okay though because like it's just weird you making fun of asian people for running small dicks i'm sort of like you know like when a white guy it's wants not to make... my intent to make fun of them i'm just acknowledging well, the are. biological reality you're being insulting but it's we like... are dumb they are smart that's true our dicks are in some cases bigger there's are in some cases smaller we don't really know how this works well that's what i'm here for like i'm like the fucking the black guy that a white guy brings around so we can make racist jokes but does that hurt when you do, are you picturing like a a 20-year-old Asian dude driving around in his car right now doing Uber Eats, and he's just hearing us talk about this, and he's kind of pissed off. But I'm I'm, I'm picturing him kind of giggling. You have to be able to laugh at the intricacies of, of your existence, right? Yeah, absolutely. And wh- when you're an Asian guy, what do you think chicks are expecting? Okay? The real tragedy is when you're a black man, but you're packing like you're Asian. Known a few of those. That's a fucking problem, dude. You've known a few of those? <laughs> yeah. I have my suspicions. Any of the homies who... Flacco. We suspect Flacco has got a small cock. But, but, I mean, Flacco claims to be 10 inches and girthy. That was his quote. But I'm just saying, like, anyone that I'm friends with that does not show me their cock or describe it in extreme detail or post photos of it or lay it out on a piece of construction paper and trace around it so I can just get the general idea. Come on, Mike. If you haven't done paper. one of those things, I'm assuming... That you're hurting in that area. That's, yeah, yeah. That's what I would assume. Now, I have many employees. Some of them haven't shown me their dicks, and I'm okay with that. And they're going to be fired if they don't do it real soon. I don't like to make that explicit. I sort of like to just, I allow them to infer that. Oh, Boston Nova, the first thing I did when I met him. What's his cock like? Lay it out. Um, It's actually, it's like a hammerhead shark. That's nice. Girls would probably really enjoy that. It's got like a block on, like a rectangle head. Ooh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's one of those little. That's an asset. Some say it's the key to a success in in real estate. <laughs> you think that's how he was able to secure such a favorable interest it's rate? LLC, Hammerhead Real Estate. <laughs> Fucking, we found. <sighs> You're still worked up over the fact that he owns a home, huh? Dude, it's it's bullshit. And we just found out that he closed on it like yesterday, which means he was lying. <gasps> A month ago, he was, what he said he already he was owned faking it. it till he made it. He faked it. He faked it till he made it, and his down payment was essentially one paycheck. Can I tell you something? Um, in the early, uh, in uh, let's say 2004, 2005, I had money from playing online poker, and I had done a lot of credit card fraud, so I had saved up a good amount of money from that, yes. right? And so this was like the the prime time for sub prime. I apologize for saying prime twice in that sentence. Subprime mortgages. What year exactly? 
2005, 2004. Okay. So this is like before the market crash. Maybe, maybe yeah. 2006. This is before the market crash in mm-hmm. 2008, right? And so I uh, – basically they were making it extremely easy for people who clearly did not deserve to have mortgages to get mortgages. Yes. Now I had some cash. And I had plans to buy this apartment building or this apartment, just an apartment. It was like a hundred grand. I had plans to buy it, uh, put down whatever, like 10, 20%, uh, or actually I think I was putting down like no money, but then the mortgage was comparatively high. I had two different mortgages, one to carry the, to carry like 70% of it. And the other was like 30% of it. Right. And so I choose to do this. The market fucking tanks right afterwards. I owned it for like 10 years and right when it got back to like the value that it was at prior to, it might've been eight years, right when it got back to the value approximately that it was when I bought it, I ended up selling it. So that is to say that now I hear that there are a lot of ways that you can kind of get a mortgage without necessarily having a lot of cash or really good credit or whatever. We're back. I think that we're back to giving out loans to everybody. Now, I'm not saying that the Bossa Nova's situation is shady because I'm assuming that they do a lot more detective work to make sure that you're on the up and up Listen, these days. Man, if you worked at Bank of America and Bossa Nova walked into your office, show me the hammerhead. And then you would give him whatever he wanted. It looks like you put a Lego in there, like a big Lego. You've really seen his penis? No. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me just like slightly different tone. Well, no, I just of uh, like of all the guys out there in the office, I feel like Bossa Nova is the guy I would feel the most bad about forcing to show me his dick. Because I mean, he He's looks sensitive. like a fifth, he looks like a fifth grader. He seems kind of sensitive. Feel like, like he could he could be hurt by it. Yeah. Whereas Trav, you know, it would just kind of bounce off. Oh, shit. This is like the shit we used to do back on the (laughs) south side of SAC, and you just whip it out. It's probably like a giant white dude cock. But Bossa Nova, like, I feel like I'm shaking down a a kid for his lunch money. Right. I don't like it. I want to. I wouldn't loan him a penny, though, if I were a bank guy. Yeah. Really, I'm just trying not to share genitals with any of the employees. But, um, also, I want to, oh, yeah, also this, AD got him backwards, what was it? Backwards? Rhino the rhino juice. Bossa Nova? Basically sex juice. And then what? Alcohol. Al- alcohol. What was it? Like little, like a little, like Jose Cuervo. little bottles of Jose Cuervo. That's what AD gave to Bossa Nova for the Secret Santa. He doesn't drink, smoke, or have sex. He's actually celibate. Is he really celibate? I know. But uh, is that religious based? He's just focus on his career. Focus on his mortgage. Um, but AD got him. Three substances that he can't use for Christmas, which we all thought was pretty funny. Well, a Secret Santa, is that, do you know who you're yes. giving a gift to? Yeah. Did AD do it as a good joke? Because, it, I mean, it is a really good he joke. He actually was confused. He thought that he had someone else. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, by the, speaking of your employees, uh, Sid, who's the gentleman you share a cubicle with? Uh, Hurley. Hurley? Yeah. That's well, who I have for Secret Santa. Well, Hurley, uh, you might want to get him uh, a sheet with some holes poked in it or a cross, preferably some gasoline to accompany the cross, because he was subtitling a clip. <laughs> and I walked by, and the N word with two G's, with an E, with an R, with an S, is fully written out on his subtitle. No. I have a picture of it on my phone. But I we, took a picture of him with his me. face in it. We would censor it on, like, we're going to censor it. Oh, Nobody yeah. should ever be writing the full N-word. Yeah. It's always going to be N asterisk, 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 A-S. Maybe just for his own personal satisfaction, Hurley didn't want to censor it yet. Defense, Is this Hurley? Uh, I thought he was coming in here to defend automated. himself. Huh? In his defense, it's automated. It's automated, right? No, yeah. it's not. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> what does that say? It is. His scroll over his face. Oh, is in okay. It. I saw him type it in. I saw him look over his you shoulder. You really think one. he would have wrote the hard R yeah. like this? Yeah. Sydney, throw him under the There's bus. There's no way. He did. <laughs> this you have. I don't believe it. You for have a, a second. bigot for it. And you know what else? I really don't Absolutely like. Absolutely not. You, you I'll know, defend Hurley Films as good name. You can defend him against accusations that he's racist, but the guy's a fucking square. Because I walk over there and he's got his MacBook propped up at a forty-five degree angle in order to prevent carpal tunnel. He's got the little like the thingy, so it's all ergonomically correct. He's got like three screens, and he's got like his his little logo like Hurley films like on all the screens dude come on man and then you go down a few cubicles into the hood of the no jumper studios (laughs) 
And those guys, like, fucking, they seldom are entering a word of data without a joint hanging out of their lips. Yeah. Okay? And then we go over here, and there's just this Melvin banging out the N-word on an ergonomically correct setup. Bro, it's there's no up. way that he actually typed that in a million years. Because even... No matter what, it's going to have to be uh, censored before it goes live. So I just don't believe for a second. I'm telling you, he does it for him. Have you ever Googled the N-word and felt kind of weird as you were typing it? What, what's going to happen when you Google the N-word? I don't know, but don't you feel kind of weird writing it? Even though as soon as you write it and hit enter, it disappears. And it's like nobody will ever know that you just had it written in that search bar for a second. <sighs> like it, uh, Thinking about uh, Jay-Z and Kanye lyrics. Sydney, uh, try it out uh, right uh, now. Uh, See if that's true. Who was in Paris? Um... <laughs> Just type that in, boom, you feel like a racist for a second, wow. right? You know, I can't obviously, because I've obviously been in, in trouble with some people in the studio for saying some things in the past. I can't act like I'm high and mighty here, but I have never Googled the N-word. I have mm. a fairly good idea of what would come up if I did. It has happened to me multiple times because I, I listen to rap music, and so I, I got to look it up a lyric. And it's like, what, what am I going to write instead of the N-word when I go to search it? Am I going to write N-word? Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of a weird situation and i'm not i know no one's watching me i know that like my my search history is not going to get exposed to the world i'm by myself you spend a lot of time on tiktok i think they've infiltrated all of your setups that's a word you really can't say on there on tiktok n-word you know oh, tiktok man. your beloved tiktok is now banned from all government devices for fear of espionage good and i really think it should be banned in america as well what do you think about that? Just you, having a good time till then. You said, I've, I've been seeing you claim on Twitter that all porn stars have been shadow banned on Twitter with the new regime, the Elon Musk regime. If they ban TikTok, I am getting a VPN and I will continue to update my TikTok and I will entertain my Chinese fans of which there are presumably almost none. You have a problem. You're in denial. And Canada. There's a lot of countries that speak English. My UK homies all my my uh vpn using americans uh -huh. okay and i'm just guy, saying i'm not gonna even though i think it should be banned yeah. i will continue to evade my own government and update it sure yeah and hurley is going to be uh translating the n-word into mandarin do you for know your how new many videos. do you know how many nord vpn placements we're going to get as a result express vpn i've done them all you know how many of those we're going to get ad deals and they're going to each and every one say don't want to give up on those 1400 tiktok followers right Use NordVPN. Mm -hmm. dun, dun. Dude, I want to I wanna cut. I want in on this. If we if we ban TikTok as a country, I'm going to go really hard on it with you using NordVPN. <laughs> and what should we do? Should we just do like pro-Chinese government propaganda? That's actually a good idea right now. We would blow up, dude. Mm. We would be. It wouldn't matter what we fucking did or if we were funny or not. If we just got huge on Chinese TikTok because they pushed the fuck out of us because we were just like Xi Jinping. Yeah. has the interests of the people at heart. We should go to Hollywood Boulevard and spread some propaganda. This actually sounds exactly like a Danny Mullen video, and I'm pretty sure you're going to do this. In front of the Chinese theater. <laughs> we could just yeah. be like, who is the single greatest race of people ever invented? I noticed that, I, I don't know if I finished it. I think I only made it like four or five minutes in, but I noticed that you going to like the black university didn't seem like it really worked out that well. Everybody was just ignoring you. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, that was right now we're just putting out break videos that are just really simple. Well, why were you there? Uh, well, to do that video? Well, we were there for another video primarily. Oh, okay. But uh, we were there for the Deshaun Watson thingy. Oh, yeah. But so we just stopped by. Okay. But, um, yeah, they, they probably... That's one strike against us if we're going to become the ministers of propaganda for China. They wouldn't like that we were in a black university. Let me ask you this. Have you had time to reflect on your uh, little ruffle, rustle, ruffle? What word am I looking for? Your, your little tussle. Not ruffle. Tussle. With Jason Ellis. Having had a little time to reflect on it, having time to read the comments. I, I, I read the comments like the first eight hours and then I haven't looked at it since. But how do you feel about it? Were people upset? I don't think. I, th I, I felt like on average people thought that you were maybe being an asshole. But it seemed like it was in the realm of what was supposed to be funny. And I felt like people kind of took it to be that he was being a little sensitive, which he kind of admitted, kind of like he hit me up. He kind of, I think he wished they maybe had handled it a little differently. I'm not saying that he's like backtracking on his entire position. And for sure you were being obnoxious, but he didn't really like demonstrate a lot of, uh, let me say this. He wasn't Mr. really Ellis. like bouncing the ball back and forth. It was kind of like a brick wall. If Mr. Ellis comes within a mile of this building ever again, 
I'm going to X guard sweep him to mount, and then I'm going to forcibly suck his dick. Ugh. Disgusting. Do you think that you and him will ever end up in the dojo together? Hopefully not, for his sake. <laughs> you know? <sighs> because listen, dude, I think he had an issue with a purple belt like myself going on brown belt. Your quote of the episode. Going on brown belt. I outrank you. <laughs> oh, I do. And you know what? I'm not buying. I do. I'm not buying that he's got a bigger penis than you. I don't know. I forget. That's something also. Like We're I both see capped people. by being white. It's it, Listen, dude. It's There's like, a cap. It, no. Danny D has showed <laughs> us that's not the case. Or Danny D, rather, is the cap. But, dude, I mean, he's basically... Jason Ellis is pulling a flacco mm. by trying to put... That was a put down. That was a put down when he said he had a bigger penis than you. I tried to stand up for you at the time. I wish I would have gone in harder. I don't... I'm not, like, prideful about my wiener. It just kind of is what it is. Listen, I... I'm not, like, trying to convince people it's bigger than they already think it is. Jason Ellis better be careful when he's training jiu-jitsu in the future because I'm going to do, if you study Gracie history, the Man. founders of the gentle art, the gentle art, this was something they did many times down in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's a dojo raid. You show up in an enemy dojo unannounced and you call somebody out on the mat. I'm going to do that to Jason Ellis and I'm going to suck Jason Ellis's dick in front of his sensei. It's like a Twitch raid, but in real life. It's way better than a Twitch raid, therefore. Right. Why do you feel the need to keep demanding that you will perpetrate these sex acts upon him that you clearly are not actually going to do? Because we don't know. He might actually be attracted to you. I mean, this is this wouldn't be totally out of line if you were to decide that you could do that. But Listen, clearly you are too cowardly to actually take part in gay acts. No. Come on, dude. Uh, I mean, your dick has touched other guys' dick, sure. but Yeah. That's, yeah. that's different. And that's why I, I've been thinking for the new year, because I, know, I noticed that Jason Ellis, he reps LGBTQ+. If I have had my penis in a vagina with another man's penis, I think I've got the right to wave the rainbow flag. I don't know. Uh, I was talking to a girl the other day, and she told me that she was filming porn with these two guys, right? And they were going to deep here. And they said to her beforehand, like, hey, you can do whatever. You want to rub our dicks together while you suck them? That's fine. Like, so she... <laughs> Just the mental image of her just rubbing the heads together. So they just, they like preemptively, like. They told her. I mean, that's the fucking gayest shit ever, right? It's like, like not only, I mean, like, dude, DPN is already sus as fuck. But to tell her, yeah, hey, don't be shy about mashing uh -huh. our fucking hammerhead shark penis tops into each other. You're obsessed with hammerhead penises today. That's yeah, just a callback. But uh, <laughs> I just, like, the <laughs> mental image of that taking place was just so troubling to me i don't know i just i just had to mention it which porn star was it i already can't remember was it sky maybe it was did she say that i don't know it's all just in one ear out the other there's a lot dude you know the, the, we've been i've been because obviously you're already the big man on campus when it comes to porn but this has really been boosting my uh porno cred mm. johnny sins followed me <laughs> Johnny fucking sins followed me. Let's go. And you know who else followed me? Uh, Angela White. What? Psyched, dude. Wow. Psyched. I wonder if they uh, watch Sledge Lords or how they got turned on to your content. It's got to be. It's it's possible. It's probably Sledge Lords. Yeah. But it's also possibly that we did that porn video with Kazumi. Oh, that's a good point too. Yeah. And maybe Johnny Sins watched the actual porn as a reminder of what not to do when you're a male performer. Yeah, I don't know. Damn. I, I See, I've had limited interaction with Johnny Sins in real life, but Angela White, we've worked together. But, uh, man, just the fact that Johnny Sins just, like, like I've seen him with chicks at these porn conventions where they see him and they just squeal and jump on him and wrap their arms around him as if he has just given them the most legendary dick and down ever. That's just so memorable that they just can't, do anything but just like dry hump him in public he's the darling of the male porn performers isn't he like, he's all the there. girls love him he's up there because he doesn't have this like freakishly big cock that like the girls are like being split open by so maybe they like would have a little bit of a different relationship with him than like a dread uh -huh. 
Mm. Uh, and also, you know, a lot of the girls are probably racist. So that helps Johnny out. Johnny Sins, though, so many girls have told me that off camera, too. Not so many. Basically, yeah. all the porn star girls that you've put me that in they contact love fucking with. Him. They say that he's the best. And, and when you hear something like that, doesn't it kind of make you want to have that effect on women? I'm too lazy. Yeah, but, like, the more that I've done on camera... And the more I like hear chicks talk about how it's so great fucking so-and-so or whatever and really being able to see it, the difference between good and bad sexually, it just really makes me want to work harder. And so that brings me into a, a problem that I had the other day. I've been beaten off without lotion my whole life. And the other day, I knocked one out real quick, like in a real hurry. And I am prone to a little bit of dry skin from it's, time to time. It's winter, buddy. It's winter. And um, I think just in this like furious masturbation session that might have literally lasted like two minutes in the Jack Shack, my back house. I've been in there. Sort of rush back there, get a quick nut out. Was gay porn on the uh, monitor? No gay porn. No. It was. I just you know, I left myself with an abrasion of sorts. <sighs> now I've been applying lotion heavily ever since. Haven't actually beat off since, but I just I th I think that I'm at the point in my life where. I, I got to oil it up a little bit. You got to, yeah. you know, you can't just be going in dry when you're 39 years old and, and suffering from dry skin and it's 30 degrees out. Yeah, you can't do it. You got to warm up. In the dead up. of night. You, you're, like, uh, you're like an athlete is getting older. You're like a wide receiver is 33, you know? You got to stretch out the foreskin a little that bit. That little abrasion I gave myself, that could have cost me a day at work. Listen, right now, you are in jack jail. This abrasion, you it's can't nearly masturbate. fixed. But I'm going to the sluttiest place on earth yeah. tomorrow yeah. and I want to make sure that I'm able to perform if need be so now i'm keeping a bucket a, a big can of jergens in my pocket a little tub and i just sort of open that up uh -huh. and just smear lotion on my cock pretty uh -huh. much wherever i'm at ready to go yeah and my the office the, the staff is so open-minded that i could just I just do it right uh, i think you should bring there. bossa nova with the industrial size jar of jergens that's actually why he's coming yes. to the porn convention is so that he could pretty much be my jergens distributor yeah absolutely it just you know you got to help him with that mortgage It'll do. Yeah. This is a thing, though, that used to happen to me a lot because I, I've always jerked off with a vino. OK, <sighs> I'm a brand loyalist. I love a vino. But especially when I was younger. Is there, a is there one over there? Oh, yeah. it's spliff time. There are, might be one in my office, too. Are yeah. those spliffs or joints you smoke? Spliffs. There's tobacco in okay. it. OK, OK. I'm going to uh, if anybody sees me in the obituary dead of lung cancer in 60 years. What time are we be because of this? We're going long. We're going longish. 313. Are we? I don't know what time we started, but I know this is not going to be an hour long episode. I got plenty to talk about, Daniel. I got a whole, I got a whole verse I'm about to drop about Dave and Buster's, but you keep going. I forgot what I was talking about. I was talking about jerking off. Jerking off. If you fucking, that's right, fucking lighter jockey. OVO might. lighter that Ben Baller gave me with the Drake logo on it. You know, I don't know who Ben Baller worn is. Worn off. It's been like four years. It's worn off. I can't believe this lighter's still going. It's ben Baller, amazing. famous Asian jeweler. Big cock. Probably not. <laughs> Listen, I'll ask Kazumi. I the the most torturous interlude in a man's life is when he has chafed himself for masturbating too frequently without lubrication, and he has to go sometimes upwards of a week without masturbating again, lest he reaggravate the injury. Yes, a terrible feeling indeed, where you just kind of have to leave your shit on ice for a minute. Yeah, it's not okay, and especially somebody like you, where again, yeah, you're putting your you're putting your career in jeopardy. Yeah. You're the running back who blows out an ACL. You can't do this. And I've, is this... Do you, do you need me to take a look at this? No, I think it'll be all right. It's pretty much healed. I think... Uh, also, I have worked with a small abrasion on my penis and just just did it anyway. You know, that makes you more susceptible to STIs. Yeah. It does. These so women are already right. tested, Daniel. Yeah, but you've told me that multiple times you and Lena have yeah, contracted from these women. And mm -hmm. also... This is another womp, womp, womp about having this convention the first weekend after New Year's. Because what do you think all the porn stars were doing on NYE? They were fucking, mm. and their tests were probably before NYE. And you already see a ton of different girls uh, on Twitter sort of like r waving the attention. This is a big deal thing. There's a thing they call the avian flu. 
where allegedly everybody goes there and then just gets sick. The AVN flu. Right. So, I mean, the odds of me getting COVID, uh, going face to face with all these porn fans and stuff, realistically, it's, it's, it's decent. Another great start to your year. It would be great to spend the uh, early part of the year. I, I might lose a lot of weight if I get COVID, so that could actually be kind of cool. That's true. And you can post about it on TikTok. <laughs> that, they probably actually will censor that, I'm sure. Anything they would, yeah. If I told people to get COVID to lose weight, yeah, they would definitely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know what they're going. Because, I mean, we're we're fairly certain now that, you know, maybe the Chinese government was doing something in a lab over there. But they are the ones who are, like, the, the least tolerant about letting it spread through the country. Right. It seems weird. But now I guess they're getting tons of cases to it because they have, like, no fucking natural immunity out there, right? Yeah. Which makes it seem like, oh, they probably should have just let people take a reasonable amount of risk at a certain point. That was my move. I just did the natural immunity path. I got fucked up, though, without having the vaccine. How many times? I got it once, Uh, but I got it bad. I got it once, vaccinated, and it was pretty bad. Yeah. I might have had it again. We don't know. Anyway. Um... So the lotion dick tail, I told you that one. Are you ready for Dave and Buster's? I'm really excited about this. On Sunday, we decided, well, it was decided for us, really, because Dave and Buster's is a bit more of an adult establishment. Sunday's the first day of the year. Right. And so it also just so happens to be my nephew's birthday, Josh's kids, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, How old are Josh's kids? Nine and six. Dude, Josh, nine and seven. I thought maybe? Josh was like 28. No. You just got young kid vibes. He's a little younger than me, though, I think. Yeah, it's like him and Bossa Nova. I'm like this close to putting them both in a trash can. Yeah, that could happen. But anyway, so we go to the Dave & Buster's. Now, we want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, but we didn't because they're a little bit older. They don't want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, whatever. So we take Parker anyway to the Dave & Buster's. We sit down and we get food. Now, the food, like, you know there's this thing that happens where they're bringing out the food to you, and it takes so long in between each individual person at the table getting their food that it really kind of like kills the vibe of everybody wanting to come together to eat their food because they're bringing the food out like 10, 15, 20 minutes apart, dude. And there's like multiple people whose like food didn't even get ordered in the first place. So they're having to put in additional orders. This is the Northridge Dave and Buster's. I just want to say that loud you and hear clear. That? I thought about writing a fucking Yelp review. That's how bad my experience was there. But instead, I decided, no, this is my art form. I'm not going to sign up for Yelp. I'm just going to talk about it here and just lay it all out there. But so the meal was fucked. It takes so long. Was for it crowded shit. there? It was pretty crowded. And there was a football game going on. And this is not the Dave and Buster's fault. But every so often, one of the teams would score and like every dude in the fucking food area of the Dave and Buster's would just stand up and scream. And it was scaring the fuck out of my kid. Yeah, but yeah. then she started to get into it. And then she would start applauding, like getting really excited about it. And it was, it was really scary, to, too, because like I can't tell when anything's going to happen. Like I could see the game, but I'm totally fucking clueless to how this game works. So I don't know that these screams are coming. Anyway, so um, then the, the end result, and keep in mind, this is a party for Henry. Josh's son, they do not bring out his meal or his brother, Teddy, until the very end. It's like the simplest meal because I'm ordering like the burger with like a bunch of stuff on it and like, you know, the nachos and shit like that. All he got was like a plain cheeseburger, right? You're a piece of shit for getting a burger and nachos the first day of the year. I mean, yeah, that's that's fair. Well, I didn't eat, I didn't eat that nachos. Fuck you, I ate a burger. But uh, anyway, like his food came so late and it's his birthday. They bring the fucking food out, dude, and they hand it. And, and Josh goes to grab it. The girl is 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 holding it with a fucking oven mitt, and Josh grabs it. He literally like scorches his fucking fingers because the plate was so hot. And this bitch is holding it with an oven mitt, so she knows exactly how hot it is. And she hands it to Josh, and he grabs it with his fucking hands. She didn't Whatever. warn him. No. Terrible Trixie experience. Trixie at the Northridge Dave and Busters. I hope you get fired. Insanity. And so then my sister goes to the fucking manager and she goes, listen, our food took forever to come out. We've been here for like two hours and we just got one of the meals we ordered. And my husband now is literally soaking his fucking hand in ice water at the table because he got his hand burnt when she brought it out. You know what they do? They give her like $40 worth of free games on cards. To the Dave and Busters. Mm-hmm. Didn't comp the meal. I paid for the meal. N- nothing. Just 
he he got his fingertips burned off. I mean, so he can commit oh, a crime. Ridiculous, dude. And, and what you uh, you acted all pissed off, but then you were like ski ball time. No, I'm acting pissed off started... now. I didn't act pissed off at all during it. I was just so blown away by what was taking place that I didn't. I didn't really have it in me to like yell at the 17 year old waitress or anything. You know, that's just not me. That's just, you bring me along. For I that. come on the podcast. I bitch about it on here. Anyway, then we go over to play the games. Right. So many of the games were broken. That happens. The, the giant claw machine. Broken. They're also rigged, even when they are functioning. And I don't even care. I don't care if it's rigged. I'm willing to like try it fucking 15 times before I finally get a good grasp on it, and then I still don't get the fucking thing. But think about it with a kid. It's like all the arcade games are pretty much a mystery to her. The claw machine is the one clear thing that she's going to be able to wrap her head around. It's simple. Yeah, it's simple. And you get a real prize. You know, the concept of like winning a bunch of tickets when it's just putting the 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 points onto the card. That's totally lost on her. You know, yeah, like yeah. if the tickets were coming out of the machine like it used to be in the old day, yeah. she would probably get it, but she doesn't understand what 25 on the fucking card means. But if she could win like a ball out of this machine, yeah. she would have been overjoyed. No, it's broken. And like every dude, mad other games I tried to play were broken as well. The whole thing was just completely fucked. And now that I say all this, I'm thinking maybe I should actually write the Yelp review. Or maybe you guys should write a bunch of Yelp reviews on my behalf and say that you're upset. You know, uh, this is a problem sleeping across America, the broken arcade games. This happened to Mm. me. I was up in South Lake Tahoe with my girlfriend a little while back. And we were playing skee ball. And everybody loves skee ball. Or is it air hockey? It's air hockey. That's the game I'm talking about. The the table where you're bouncing it back and forth. Skee ball is where you roll the ball. It's like bowling and you try to land it and get a score. Skee ball sucks. Skee ball I like because that was that was a popular game when I was young. I don't really do the the the, the air hockey. You, know, you don't have the hand eye. It's so intense, dude. Yeah. It's really intense, and yeah. it separates the men from the boys. Listen, you can and have it. I, I, don't, play- I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, I'll take it. And then I was playing that game, and then midway through, right when the stakes are getting high between me and my lady. The air jet shut off and it's over. But then you have to ask yourself, when you get fucked over at an American arcade, are you willing to go argue with a pimply 16-year-old about getting a refund? No. Are you willing to degrade yourself no. over not getting a Pikachu out of the claw machine? Yeah. I wasn't. I, I mean, and as long as I'm, like, cataloging all of the machines that are broken. What else? At, once again, the Northridge Dave and Busters. Yeah. Because who who cares? It's not like I'm going to walk in there. It's not like any one of those employees is dedicated enough to their job to give a fuck about this review. Maybe there is. If a, gen, a general manager ends up reviewing this and realizes that his business is in a state of disarray, that would be great. But there's a game. It's basically like you're Luigi and there's like a some sort of like ghost sucking gun yeah, of Lu- some sort go oh, sounds pornographic I don't luigi's know. mansion it's probably based on something of like luigi's that yeah mansion. and you point it at the screen and you're like pressing the button and it's supposed to be like sucking the ghosts in or some shit like that and I, you know i go i swear my card because i'm looking at it thinking oh like parker likes mario and luigi she thinks they're funny maybe she'll enjoy this game no it didn't fucking work the, th- the thing is like so clunky this this the cursor like the way it moves around the screen didn't fucking work at all and then yeah i'm, I'm considering like Am I seriously going to go over to the prize section and wait in line until I finally get up to this dude and then I tell Please him, help me, help can you me. add one credit to this card? Yeah, I'm sorry. Luigi <sighs> sucker game wasn't functioning. D- d- to be fair, though, does, your, does Parker even know the difference between a functioning Luigi's Mansion no. and one that's on the fritz? And that's the great thing about them being at this age is that they don't even understand if the game is on or if they're playing the game right now. They have no concept of a score or anything. There was a broken Hungry Hungry Hippos machine, another machine at the Northridge Dave & Buster's that was broken. It was completely broken. The hippos didn't move, whatever. But it's a hippo. She wants to sit on it. She, she spent more time gravitating towards this broken hip, Hungry Hungry Hippos machine just sitting on it than any of the other machines in there. Yeah. It is beautiful, though. I guess you can take these kids out. Like, you, Josh's kids had no idea. The concept of uh, uh, adequate service in a mm. restaurant, that's over their head. No. And that's... We it, will burn your fingers off. And I'm getting anxiety just hearing about that shit because I used to work in fine dining where you would get a serious tongue lashing from the chef if... And that's the hardest part about working in fine dining. It's not communicating with the guests or bringing out the So for the, the record, order. you consider Dave & Buster's fine dining? No, no. I've worked in fine dining. I consider Dave & Buster's um, It's like a, a burger abomination. and pizza. It's yeah. an abomination of dining. It's almost nothing. But that was the hardest part about working in a restaurant is you have to make sure all the courses come out 
salad or appetizer, salad course, entree, dessert, mm. one after another, and you have to fire them. So if somebody's eating their fucking salad, some fatso comes in, some dude who just walked over from the downtown banking sector of San Francisco, he's eating his fucking salad. You can't fire his braised quail until he's like halfway done with his salad. You got to get the timing so perfect that right when they pull that salad off his plate, in comes the hot quail mm. with like... You want ideally the bus boy to be walking away with the dirty plate, the runner to come over and reset the table, and then the server to come drop the fucking quail in like a minute window. So actually, it's interesting you say that because I was just reading uh, or listening to a podcast on the daily with the New York Times food critic, and he basically completely changed up the way that he did his job during the pandemic because all of these fancy ass restaurants are closed and stuff. And normally, the way that this works is that if you get is it four. Or is it five stars? Four stars is the best. I, I, uh, four stars is the best, I think. The Michelin stars right. are what people shoot for. But the New York Times is kind of like second to the Michelin rating, I think. It's like very, very important in New York, whatever. So he kind of stopped. Why are you touching your penis? I was going to do a Jesus bit with Jesus Christ. He had a cup on that whole time? What the <laughs> fuck? I was going to do a bit with it. Yeah, oh, I, I kept seeing you adjusting it. And I was like, what is he doing his dick over there? Anyway, <laughs> um, he changed up his whole style. During the pandemic, because all these fancy ass restaurants are closed, and he started to like really try to find interesting niche subculture esque. Like, you know, he found, you know, a Vietnamese fucking pork truck on the side of the road in Harlem, and, you know, it was super popping, and there was like a yes. huge line. It's really popular. So he started to cover more stuff like that and got away from doing the mega fine dining stuff. So that's what I was expecting from fucking Dave and Buster's. Is I thought I was going to get a, a, a hilarious, whimsical take on, on pub food. And instead, I got Josh's fingers getting burned off like he's in Men in Black. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I like how you actually thought there was going to be some like qualified chef back there who like had an ironic sense of humor. It was going to be like actually bringing you out a good burger. It was going to be like like it was going to be a, a Michelin star chef's take on bar food. You thought it was going to be this Not hip that. little fucking but I dude, thought that David Buster. At least like there might be some sense of. No sass. There's no self awareness in the kitchen. Is it so much to Dave request Buster. some sass? Dude, yes. I want sass you with know, my pub food. I, when I went and shot with Nelk, I got flown to Flint, Michigan, with Nelk about a year ago to shoot their Bigfoot video. Okay. Really great experience. The only bad thing was that fucking Jimmy Gambles of the Nelk Squad, after we had a successful shoot, demands everybody goes to Dave and Buster. Because not even Buster's, he demands everybody goes to Buffalo Wild Wings because he has the palate of a fucking uh, rape victim. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Just getting raped does not change Comedian your taste. Comedian just trying to come up with like something. Like you can't just say like he has a child's palate. You have to say the palate of, and then you have to in that moment, like a freestyle rapper, think of something that would make sense in this moment. You're demystifying. The I art saw form. what just happened, and I saw I saw it kind of not work out. Yeah. Oh, was, I liked it. Buffalo Wild Wings. It sucks. Is it really that bad? Dude, it is so I feel like it's way bad. better than... Oh, I haven't had it. It was disgusting. I haven't had it in 10 years. It was disgusting. The service was comparably bad to what you just described. I lived across the street from a fucking Buffalo Wild Wings in Koreatown for multiple years. Never went there. Dude, it's it never... You dodged a big bullet. <sighs> you dodged an IED. That dude, it was. I got the boneless wings, which is a mistake because yeah. I'm pretty sure those are like genetically modified. I don't do that. The I server talked me into Bone. it, dude. It just it. I wanted to just throw up my meal. You know, like you think once you start eating healthy, and it sounds like you're on that track, yeah. and then you, in a moment of weakness, roll into a pizza parlor or a Buffalo Wild Wings, you just end up wanting to throw up after the meal. You don't feel sated. But I can eat like a piece of pizza and it feels fine. My problem is that when I like. I'm so high that I end up doing what I used to do back in the day, which is eating like, you know, five or six pieces of pizza or like an entire pizza. And that now produces very catastrophic results the next morning. I will take many shits. They will most likely not be of a terribly solid consistency uh. and it will hurt. And my asshole will get irritated. See, for me, it's the opposite because I, 
<laughs> I eat grain free usually. So when I eat pizza, it's like my body's like, oh wow, starches, and mm-hmm. it like a shit snowball develops in me. And the product the next morning is relatively solid and clean. Interesting. But that's the one good thing about well, one of the best things about me being on this health kick and going into the new year uh, in the best shape of my life, two hundred and fourteen and a half pounds, feeling really good about that. The lowest weight that I've ever been as an adult. Will I be able to hold on to it when I'm in the porn valley? No. I don't know. What is no. everybody else going to be eating? Cock and cum. I got to look hot while I'm out there. There's going to be like, on? there's going to be gay fans who are like stoked to meet me because they like to watch me fuck girls even though they're gay. You know, that's like one of the things that that's, is, that's part of your audience. I assume like you don't really know until you go there, but I know that like, okay, regular male porn stars, and I'm not really ready to put myself in that category yet because I don't know how I'm thought of in that regard, but. Huh. Any, any male porn star who has an OnlyFans knows that the vast majority of the people who are paying for your OnlyFans are gay dudes. Wow. And that those gay dudes don't mind watching you fuck chicks. Do you think like... I've never encountered this in real life necessarily, but I'm assuming I'm going to encounter at least some degree of it out there. I think... Because there is a big... There's two different kinds of guys with OnlyFans. There's the guys like you and Johnny Sins who fuck chicks on the OnlyFans. And then there are the guys who uh, are doing mirror photos in selfies, well-lit selfies of them uh, oiled up with their rock-hard phallus. Mm. That's for gay dudes. If you're fucking a chick... I bet I, Johnny Sins is doing that, too. Keep yeah, he's, fans happy. he's got a pretty good physique. Well, yeah. But I, what I wanted to... It's, you it's, check me out once I... Uh... <clears throat> Once I get in like my real good shape, well, I've checked you out plenty as it is. But, but I, I, I don't think I'm gonna cross that line. I'm not gonna like start an OnlyFans where I post jerk off videos. I think that's, I, I, I might regret saying this because I could probably end up I, doing it. I mean, it, but... you got to pay the mortgage on a home and an office. I think it's something you should seriously consider. Yeah, I'm all right. I, uh, it was interesting how you said that. Like, you don't feel when you're around real male porn stars. Like if you were around a Donny D or a Danny D or Johnny Sins, it's interesting how you and I have that sort of imposter syndrome going on with both comedy and porn but i think that's fair right in the porn thing no dude i mean how are the regular male porn stars better than you you know Mm. damn well that most guys who do porn are fucking losers other than the very top guys in the industry okay but i'm not like questioning if they're losers or not i'm just questioning if i deserve to be able to hang with dudes who literally like do this for a living full time given that i do it very little in comparison and you know, I'm trying to take it more serious. I'm trying to like do the best job I can and everything. But I just, it's not my form. Like, like it would be a nightmare for me if I was nominated for like male porn star of the year. I would probably hit them up and ask them to remove my name uh-huh. because I just don't want to be like judged against the dreads and the Johnny sins of the world. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They, they, they can have the, the, the star, the, the, the limelight, if yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. And, and but you know what the thing is, Plug Talk is nominated for. Porn podcast of the year at the AVN Awards. Well, obviously, and I'm going to uh, be honest porn with you. Podcast comes close. There are a lot of other nominees, and I would say that, like, we at least numbers wise, we probably should win. So it could be that we have to like give an acceptance speech. Now it could also be that they don't announce this during the award ceremony. So I have to figure that out because that would probably be the only reason that'll go. Uh, Because I'm not really like, it's like a fucking five hour award show. Yeah. You need to either like take Adderall or like bring a fucking battery case for your phone because you're going to be bored. There's a lot. It takes a while. Yeah. Yeah. David Foster Wallace, the great author, he went to the AVN Awards back in the 90s and wrote about it. He did. And that's something he brought up. It's called a cruise. So I read that book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Collection of stories about it. A supposedly fun thing I'll never do again. A lot of comedy writers use that as like their little. Bible. I don't think I've ever won anything in life. Ever. He certainly failed at the claw machine. It was broken. You um, still lost. But no, I've never won anything. You know, I was I was nominated for like best kendama influencer one year. What influencer? Kendama. The you know, fuck is that? You don't know what that is? That fucking toy that we're always playing with out there? Oh, the ball I stick? forgot what they're called. I love that he didn't even know what it was called. I have a, I have your kendama <laughs> right. on my desk. But but. I was nominated for like top kendama influencer, and then the dude who won was like a guy who does like demos at elementary schools. After I had just gotten all these YouTube videos with like five million views of us playing kendama, which you know they're purists in the kendama world. 
I just I didn't fucking give a fuck at all, but I was a little surprised. I'm like, what, what exactly is the criteria for winning this award? Yeah, they're purists. It's like uh, guys like Ryan Sheckler and Nyjah get no cred in the skate industry because they're too Hollywood. Even though they probably are the people exposing skateboarding to the most people, yeah. realistically. Yeah. But it's like dudes like fucking, I don't know, just like the shitty guys who look like they have head lice and sleep in a van at night get all the cred. But I've just, I've, I've like been fairly successful in a bunch of different realms. And never, like, I've never won an award for anything rap-related. Does that upset you? No. Does this upset you? I don't give a fuck. Because the, the, I can't even think of an award that I would ever expect to have a chance at winning. Because, like, the BET Awards, is they, they do, like, Media Company of the Year, hip-hop media company or whatever. And, like, me, Academics, and Vlad all don't get nominated. And they nominate, like, all these, like, fucking websites that are, like, don't even make original content. Uh-huh. So it's, like... I don't know. It's pretty insane. I mean, but but I don't even consider myself to be in the running because I see them and I see them nominating bullshit and I'm like, oh, whatever. Well, they probably look at you as a cultural appropriator. A lot of the other sites that are nominated, I'm pretty sure, are owned by white people as well. Yeah, but I mean, you really take the white ownership to the next level. <laughs> yeah, the way you run, you're different. It. You're worse. <laughs> you're worse. I'm, trust me, I've been around the office. I've seen the morale, especially in the people of color. Listen, I got to ask you this: yeah. How do you rank yourself as a fucker? Because oh, can we stop talking about sex? I feel like we've overdone it. Because <laughs> I like I, I I've, I've seen a couple of clips of you banging, and I, I've said this before, but the impression I got was you looked like a lazy polar bear. Do you think that my 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 work needs work? I'm not saying that, and I, I would agree because I've watched some of my older scenes, and I'm like, bro, I'm so much better now, and I just I hate that this is online forever, and I'm going to be judged for this when I know that I'm capable of a lot more now. I just I feel like I mean, you're the breadwinner, dude. You're a rich man. You own a massive media conglomerate that routinely gets snubbed by BET. Have you? Who says you even need to do any have work? Have you ever the heard bedroom? the uh, the phrase? You'll ne- There's no dick like broke dick. Agreed with it completely. Like, if a girl is fucking a dude who has nothing to offer so true. but dick, so true. he's going to go crazy because so true. this is the only thing he has going for him. If you have no money, no status, no yeah. possessions, all you are is a dick. Yeah. No, no education, whatever. Like, all these things that basically make up your social currency. Yeah. If those are all missing, all you have is fucking. And that's the dude who's going to make you orgasm eight times because he has nothing else to do with his life. Me, on the other hand, sometimes maybe I phone it in a little bit, and I I don't want to do that. I want to go into the new year with passion. It's also a problem, too, because it's a shortcoming of mine that once you get comfortable in a relationship, a little bit of that romance gets lost. Mm. And how can I compete with the guy who... Because remember the amount of work you're willing to put in to not fuck a girl, but just court a woman when you're single and you're trying like a girl who's married and has been married for 15 years how can she compete with the guy who's writing her haikus and throwing pebbles at her window Mm. that guy who's willing to really go the extra mile buy flowers if lena had like a real deal suitor that i felt like i had to compete with that would be a fucking problem like a guy in tights with pointy shoes? Like Peter Pan? Peter Pan, dude. <laughs> what if Peter Pan was coming after Elena? <laughs> I don't think that's fair. I don't think that that's how that should work at all. It's how it does work, though. No, because she's... she. If you're going to be my girl, you need to have other men tuned out to the extent... I'm starting to feel like Andrew Tate already. So you, you shouldn't even, like, notice them. How many times have you listened to Pinkerton in recent memory? By Weezer? Yeah. No, the other Pinkerton. No, Pinkerton by Metallica. Um, (laughs) Well, Pinkertons were security guards in Pittsburgh in the 1800s. Was it? Yeah, oh, it was yeah, Pinkerton yeah, yeah, yeah. Security Force. Okay, fair enough. But I, anyway. I like that you and I are bonding over Pinkerton. This is real white guy shit coming okay. down the pike right here. Well, another Weezer question. How many Weezer albums besides the Blue Album, Pinkerton, and I assume the Green Album have you listened to? I like Everything Will Be All Right in the End. That's a, an album that I haven't listened to? It's middle Weezer. It's pretty good. I'm very fascinated by them because they have so many good albums and so many bad albums. And I watched this video of Anthony Fantano and this like Weezer fan who shout out to Anthony Fantano for mischaracterizing my opinion on the Megan the Stall- Stallion uh, situation. <laughs> uh, he called me a loser. He acted like I fucking, but I'm just going to keep saying this on every podcast possible, but he acted like I was against Meg the Stallion and the Meg the Stallion Tory the Lane shooting incident, which is just not true. I defended Meg the Stallion on here every fucking week. And now I got this guy spreading this fake news about me. Anyway, but I watched them debate the Blue Album versus Pinkerton. 
And that led me to the White Album, which I've been listening to a lot because the other guy that Fantana was arguing with, he's a huge fan of the White Album. I've listened to it a lot. It's a really great What's album. What's the main song on the White Album? California Kids or some shit is the first song, I believe. I like a band that writes a bunch of songs about L.A. Because I yeah. live in L.A. And it's like, this is my soundtrack while I'm cruising Sunset Boulevard, Yeah, maybe. And, you know, the other day I was listening to a Cinema, Cinema Beer Nuts. Is this this is too old for you, right? Yeah, well, now we're out of It was like a punk expertise. compilation that maybe came out in like 1997 of all these like different ska and punk bands and a huge percentage of it is in Southern California. And when I'm, I was going back and I'm watching bands like the Vandals and like MXPX and all these fucking like lame ass bands. And I'm just thinking like every band that I knew about on the East Coast was negative and angry and, and edgy. And every band that we liked from Southern California, from Blink-182 to whoever, it was positive, it was poppy, it was mm -hmm. fun, and it was all L.A., O.C., whatever. Like, like we basically had to just go to L.A. for, like, fun music because mm -hmm. the East Coast really was not generating a lot of it. I mean, that makes sense. It's uh, I've already been fucking depressed with this little El Nino we've had going on, the rainstorms in L.A. Oh, God, I hate it. it. Sucks. Fuck the weather. Oh, it's bullshit, dude. I mean, I can't even be bothered to get up and get out of bed and do any work when it's cloudy out. But uh, the Pinkerton versus the Blue album, I just, I'm sorry, my mind keeps going back to that. I got to go Blue just because Pinkerton... Pinkerton's got some indie jams, dude, across the sea. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good stuff on there. But far Butterfly. less... It's less consistent. And the thing is, dude, Pink Buddy triangle. Holly, Buddy Holly. Yeah, come on. Dude. The, the high points come of the Blue on. Album are way higher. Come on. And I hope that there's like a, a Weezer Reddit out there that is dissecting this. But, uh, and then, okay, the other good I'll point that they make. suck their dicks, too. Pinkerton has weird lyrical content in comparison. Yeah. There's it, a bunch of weird, like, sort of abusive, like, and it might not have seemed weird at the time. But I remember even at the time listening, he's talking about this Japanese fan that he was fucking with way back in the day. Who's 18 years old. Right. He's and exchanging it, letters with. I might have Chris been... Chris got canceled for trying to fuck an 18-year-old. I might have been 13 or 12 when I first heard that song. Maybe a little, maybe like 14, 15 by the time Pinkerton came out. And even then, I remember thinking, this is weird. Like, you, you could be a rock star and just make songs about fucking your your fans like yeah interesting i didn't know that even as like a little kid I, I remember that standing out to me art about fucking your fans he never fucked her though it just seems it like, was unfulfilled because right. he lived across the sea but there's it's other cute. shit he's talking about like how she shouldn't have makeup on when he's not around and stuff he sounds like a textbook abusive boyfriend right? and that he sounds like andrew tate to bring it back to that <laughs> but that's uh yeah that's a song off the blue album it's a uh, oh, i yeah, want right. Right. a girl who will yeah. laugh for no but then he said who puts I, her makeup on the shelf yes but mm. then the next song is the world has turned and left me here and it's the second part of that story where the chick leaves him for being a controlling psycho and then at the end it's only in dreams where he's just jerking off to chicks i would much prefer a, a troubled protagonist when it comes to music like i want to see somebody sort of lay out all their messiness and i think in that song when he's saying like he's basically acknowledging himself as an insecure boyfriend potentially almost kind of like abusive mentally I mean, I'm kind of there for that. Like, I don't want you to turn that down just to sound, like, non-offensive on a record, right? Oh, absolutely. I would like to—I want to know about the interior of your mind. And I think that that was what happened is that Rivers had so much confidence off of the Blue Album that he's like, oh, I can really just be myself, and they're going to fuck with whatever I bring mm -hmm. to the table— and then they fucking hated it. And he didn't even play any songs off Pinkerton for years and yeah. years and years. Do you know about his metal background? Uh, like he was a big time technical metalhead. And that when you listen to the Blue Album structurally, there are so many fucking weird things going on that are just like so out of line compared to what the average punk band was doing at the time. His guitar solo shred, too. Yeah, just the, the structure, though. There's all these weird bridges and just like different things they do with the choruses and stuff. I, know I, I don't lack, I lack the language to properly communicate i get what you're saying I, I know for i think it was blue maybe it was pinkerton though he went and diagrammed all of hard day's night by the beatles he was obsessed with that album and he uh, there are a lot of like lyrical similarities too in those songs like and he stole some of the melodies from really? hard day's night i'm trying to think of a song in particular so i can't have my feelings all go out of my mind is a lyric from hard day's night and he recycles that for i can't my feelings all go out of my mind for hash pipe. right yeah but yeah he's that's the, the green album oh, fuck you but uh, is the green album cool by you like because i love hash pipe hash pipes like the most yeah, hated the weezer song that's one song it's a great song but it there's something lost with hash pipe right 
Dun, 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 dude, dun. that song kicks ass, dude. You can suck my man. I fucking love it. But uh, I, I like somebody who uh, has enough respect for the classics to go back and like study where the art form came from. I remember doing. I remember talking to a guy who was a musician once. He was like a career musician, and I was like, "So, uh, what's your favorite Rolling Stones album?" He's like, oh, "I don't listen to the Rolling Stones." It's like, "Do you like the Beatles?" He's like, "No, I never got into the Beatles." And at that point, I wanted to punch him in the groin, but certainly never listen to his music. Right. I mean, come on, dude. Yeah, familiarize yourself with the classics, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially in rock music, where we already know all the best stuff's already been made. Yeah. It's... With a few exceptions, but it's like, you know, how long could it possibly take you to, like, find one of those lists of, like, top 100 songs of all time and just fucking run through it and do a little deep dive on the, the stuff that seems applicable to your interests. Yeah. I exactly. hate that. I hate that these kids are so bad at research. It's like one thing if you're like, yeah, I didn't quite make it to the Allman Brothers or I didn't quite get into the band, but the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, I mean, come fucking on, dude. It's but, like you and I have never having heard of Richard Pryor or George Carlin. So... I invented essentially the BMX podcast, right? I was and pretty that, much the first person doing it. That's one reason I wish I had never met you. <laughs> so <laughs> that's fucking so lame. I left it behind, and I uh, started to do these rap interviews, whatever. At a certain point, I just kind of stopped interviewing so many BMX riders, right? And now there's like a new BMX frontier for podcasts, right? And there's this fucking kid who used to be my intern. This kid Bobby, right? And he's he used to be my intern, and by that, I'm, he, like, slept on the couch for, like, a month at my flop house in, like, 2011. But now he's doing this BMX podcast, and I'm just going to call him out here because I, I thought about texting him this, but then I'm like, oh, it's, Listen too, up, it's too mean. Like, I don't want to fucking, like, if I text him and tell him that this is annoying me, yeah. it seems mean. But yeah, this, talking this about is a way it, more humane I can talk it. about it on here, and then that's much better. Yeah, Nobody totally. knows what I'm talking about. But he, just, he does this thing where he, like, interviews these legendary writers from the 90s that, to me, I can remember everything that they ever fucking did because I was studying this as a kid. And it's just, like, he makes it sound like it would be impossible to just, like, do a nice deep dive. These guys, like, in their entire careers had, like, five video parts and went on, like, two road trips that they're, like, separate videos for. And all this shit's on YouTube. It's all back. To, it's all archived. Damn near all of it. And it's just, like... When I w listen to him do podcasts, I'm like, bro, how the fuck are you doing this podcast without having taken the time to actually, like, really watch the shit that these dudes did? Like, it just, it kind of lets me down. Like, that's just, like, disrespectful to your guests to not, like, really do your research. So he's asking questions like, so uh, before you got on Schwinn, like, did you have any video parts? Or, like, what was the, like, where, when did you learn to tail with? I or, saw fucking this dude, Rap Boy, mention an important video part, and he, he's just like, hadn't seen it. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh -huh. Like, this guy had like five video parts in his whole career. You didn't go see like this one that he's talking about. But then the thing that really are they big me videos too. Listen, listen, yeah, you, you know Mark Gonzalez, the skateboarding legend. Oh yeah, fucking video days. Blind. Well, it just so happens that Mark Gonzalez is like one of the most generic names you could ever imagine. So there's a really famous legendary BMX rider named Mark Gonzalez as well, from Arizona. Mexican dude, crazy as fuck. Allegedly was on a lot of substances at one point, uh, kind of faded away from the scene, whatever. And I had to listen to this motherfucker Bobby ask this dude, is Mark Gonzalez from skating the same as the one from BMX? What, are you 11? Like, did you really have to ask that? Like, what the fuck, dude? Listen, dude, you are, you're <sighs> sorry, smearing, sorry, Bobby. you're smearing the 22 coaching tree. The 22, because it's natural that people who work for you are going to branch out and start their own podcast program. To say that he worked for me because he slept on the couch Listen, 13 he, he, years he ago. He worked for you. <laughs> he, he's tied to you. For better or for worse, he's part of your legacy. And him going out there and conducting these half-assed interviews... <laughs> <laughs> where he thinks a guy has mastered two different art forms. The 22 mentality on display right there. Listen, the, Thank 20, you very much. the 22 mentality says you got to know your shit, son. Mm. Except when it comes to hip-hop. Because clearly I don't know anything about that. Can you print out a picture of that 22 mentality cover art and then have it scaled to the exact size of this book cover so that we can superimpose it onto it? Thank you. <laughs> if he actually does it. Are you going to do it? Uh, why don't we get N-Word <laughs> McGee out there, Hurley, to do it? N-Word McGee. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm still typing that word. Right? Let's get him to do it. Yeah, um, that'll be fun to see him have a spin at the Kobe Bryant book. I don't know, but, like, when you... Have you ever, like, had to do, like, in-depth researching for anybody that you interviewed? Or do you, I do in-depth really, like, research interview for so videos. Much, right? For videos, yeah. I do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. 
It's it feels fun. like that's something that's just been lost on the new generation. The idea of just sort of like sitting back and intentionally searching for and, and consuming all the material that you can about something that you're interested in. When you're like, if you're expecting other people to watch you make content about something, that feels like it's like the least you could ask for. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to be fair, it's also a little bit easier to do research now. And let's not act like you and I are in libraries on hands and knees going through primary sources. Mm. You and I hop on Wikipedia or YouTube. YouTube, but Google. Right. But we, we are, it is offensive to me that there are people out there, YouTubers who are, they're drinking four nights a week. Mm. They're, uh, they outsource everything to their staff. I mean, you and I have the passion. Mm. You, you and I have the passion to me. I, I will do all the research I need to into why San Francisco sucks right now before I take a drunken crew of goons there to raise hell. Mm. You, before having some uh, minor hip hop figure on your podcast and before he beats the shit out of another I'm even digging in. minor hip hop figure, you'll know like, <sighs> oh, that says the N word too. Do you put that away? Come on. This will, this will do for the time being. So I got um there's this girl there's this girl Sandrine who's like uh in the orbit of the Danny Mullen squad. Well, pretty close to the cover of the book too. I'm impressed. It's, it looks great. What's uh, her name? Her name's Sandrine. She's in the the Danny Mullen orbit. Okay. She's um she believes in uh, reincarnation, twin flames, astrology. I hope she does. She, she thinks you're a, <laughs> I don't know anything. Well, about she it, but... she's going to distrust you even more now. She thinks you're a really negative influence on me. Really? Yeah, because uh, of course your name is associated with masonry in her mind. She thinks you're like trying to control me and like turn me into one of the elites. And, like, make me kill babies and, like, molest kids. Who is kids. this girl? What do I have to Google to see her? I want to see what she looks like. Well, I did a video where uh, her and I just went on a date jet skiing. That's two videos ago. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I saw that one. Yeah, she thinks you're, like, a really negative influence in my life. She do you think she might have a point? I think um, I think your ties to the Clinton family are concerning. Yeah. So, for the record, her opinion that I'm in some way having a negative impact on you is due to my alleged masonry and yeah. connections to the Democratic Party and yeah. not through my actual like horrible negative attitude that I probably share with you throughout the week that, via text. That's what I told her. She was like, yeah. He's that would be a valid argument if they were to say like Adam is an asshole and it's exactly. somehow like seeping into Danny by osmosis through this podcast. That seems at least like possible. Th that's what I told her. She was like, yeah, he's trying to clean you up and make you corporate. And I was like, he's got a fucking face tattoo and he does porn. Who could be less corporate than me? <laughs> no corporation wants anything to do with me. I think that yeah. that's become clear. And he like Besides NordVPN. And, and uh, Manscaped, thank you. Mm -hmm. And like, I was like, he had me on the podcast for the first time. There we go. That's, that's the girl who loves you. And uh, she got the crazy eyes. She looks like she got like Mental issues. She's petitioning Andrew Tate to hire her there because she's a virgin still. Oh, she's a cloud chaser. Uh, yeah, she wants to. Uh, she, but yeah, like the reason I feel like you had me on uh, on your show to begin with is because I had a history of in context using the N word. Like that is very not uh, like media elite. Yeah, if I had any reservation about working with you in general, it was definitely like, damn, are all the black dudes from No Jumper gonna fuck with Danny or like? accept him or like think it's even cool that i'm like doing a show with him uh so that's why it was important to me that i like introduced you to them in a way where it was like they got to feel like they were actually like making their own opinion of you mm -hmm. you know like and uh i wanted to do that introduction before i was like oh hey i'm doing a show with this guy and now you're gonna hear from all these different anonymous sources about what a terrible person he is you know but then also it's like I uh, don't care, and uh, I'm not going to let anybody tell me what to do, and I'm not – like, like anytime somebody says anything about you, which hasn't really happened, but I could imagine it happening, like, from the hip-hop perspective of, like, oh, you do a podcast with this racist, and look at these examples of him being racist. I, I want to say right now, I, I use the N-word in context as saying. a joke. I've like, never expressed any racist sentiment ever, and I am not a racist. And that's why I'm or glad – it sound like I am a white That's why I'm glad nobody's really trying to pull that argument with on me because it's like, so you're a cancel culture person? You don't want comedians to make edgy jokes. Yeah. I just like that is so not convincing to me. And, and I see some of the fans kind of trying to stir it up from time to time, but uh. Fuck you, dude. Fuck him. I uh I want to make the jokes I want to make. If Jason Ellis comes near here, I want to suck his dick. <laughs> I mean fucking That would be the ultimate epilogue uh to you and him working together is if A, you did jujitsu together, and then B, you and him were to bang his wife together. Oh boy. 
That would be good. And I wouldn't even make that joke with most people, but he's made it clear that that's not off the table, not with you specifically, but with like other dudes, you know, that that's a thing. So yeah, he's got a he's got a gay buddy who they he bangs they bang his wife together, but the guy couldn't get it up for a long time until <laughs> they were all comfortable together. For a long time. Like how long are you allowing this guy to make this mistake? I think he gave him like six or seven shots and then one day the guy just got a hard dick and it was on. I would be so offended on behalf of my woman. <laughs> the guy was gay. Yeah. The guy was like Jason. I mean, this is what Jason said on the podcast with us, so I'm not outing him here. When I hear about like his sex life, I'm just like, holy fuck, dude. Like You are having so much more fun than me, clearly. You're just like meeting up with these weird groups of people, and you're planning out this freaky shit going on and everything, and it's just like I'm not putting anywhere near that amount of thought into my sexual activities i mean <laughs> to the extent that i am it's for money you're being the only difference that you and jason ellis's sex life has is that you don't get your dick sucked by guys in porn theaters that's all you're missing no. otherwise you do the same shit what are you no, talking about i don't ever meet up to do any kind of extracurricular sexual shit you're an asshole you have a show where you and your that's it, girl the, uh, fuck uh, chicks. it's boring you're, that, you're gonna fuck a girl this weekend in right, vegas but I you know that it's different no. Yes, it is. It's work. It's like I do it at 2 p.m. on a fucking Tuesday. It's not like some some seedy behavior. But when you, you guys, you're acting like somebody who doesn't even know me. But what, no, but I'm saying like or, or like you just don't have a nuanced okay. perspective on it because you know what I'm saying. But so what you're saying is, but you guys get once last time you guys got drunk and had sex with a girl and it wasn't work. Uh, three years ago. All right, it's been a while. Yeah, it's like not even like a thing at all. But it's like whereas with him. He's meeting up in sex theaters, apparently, of, of some sort. I don't know. And Cox are tapping him on the shoulder. I'm just appearing there. Does he do nude, nude jujitsu? Is that is that Ooh. something we should explore? I have jerked off to nude jujitsu porn before. Seriously? With yeah. girls? Yeah, a girl wrestled a guy, and the guy lost, so the rules dictated she had to suck his dick. How was the match? The technique was phenomenal. No, it was just a random porn star wearing a gi, right? Yeah, it was terrible. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I actually, I study it before the moon jowls. You know what I saw? You ever see the Office episode where Pam uh, is revealed to be like a, a volleyball god and she fucking spikes the volleyball and it looks like she's so good at volleyball? Uh. Oh. Well, I, I saw like a YouTube video that broke down how actually the what you see her do in that scene is like the worst volleyball performance you could ever imagine for anybody yeah so it's like you know tv's always trying to pull the wool over our eyes like that i bet that guy was real proud of himself who made that video good for you buddy or you ever see like a skate movie where like the you never actually see the protagonist skate because yeah. they don't know how to skate yeah and whenever they do a trick you can't see their face yeah and they're wearing a wig that pisses me off or when people are playing guitar because i mean i fancy myself uh I've coaxed one or two females into bed with my uh, minstrel ship. Wait, you're good at playing guitar? Good enough. Okay. I used to, I used to, in high school, I'd bring girls down to, because I, my parents and I had a weird relationship where I couldn't tell them I had girlfriends. So if I was doing my business. Because I thought you were gay. No, no not, <laughs> not because they thought You didn't want to let them down. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I'm about to walk off this <laughs> set. Wait, why would you, your parents didn't want you fucking? Why are they Mormon? Uh, it was just I had a lot of shame. I was brought up with the fear of God, mm. you know, and so I would take my women down to the barn. That's where I would do it, and I would pull out the old Martin, and I'd be like, "Hey, baby," I always talked in that voice when I was about to play a girl a guitar. Mm. I'd be like, "Hey, baby, this is a little number I wrote back in." Uh, oh five. Mm. It's called. It's called Buddy Holly. <laughs> <laughs> I look just like Buddy Holly. And I would do that it. song. That music video came preloaded on my mom's computer that she bought in like 1996. It was like that music video was on the computer. It was the only video on there. I think she might have stole the computer. Then I think that's what that means. No, it came with Windows 95. It, they that's great marketing you for Buddy Holly. Yeah. That's good. That probably launched Weezer's career. It, it was, was like, definitely a big impact. It, it was like when fucking U2 raped my iPod with their album. I see. I, I heard about this. I don't think I had an iPod at the time. Hey. You fuck with Ben Folds 5? I saw him cover an Elliott Smith song once. That's all I know about Ben Folds. Okay, so they have a song called, like, a Brick, and the whole song is about, like, him and his girlfriend going to get an abortion on Christmas Day, and uh, it's a super sad song. Is it true? Is it based on real events? Yeah. And so I looked it up, like, basically... You waited one day? 
I know, man. Or maybe it's like the day after or something, but it's like right. It's it's right there. It's right by Christmas, right? Like, and why? it's snowing. It's super sad. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> like I looked up details about the song on YouTube because I just wanted to confirm and like see if my memory was deceiving me because I remember learning about the song probably like in high school and I wanted to just make sure it was actually about the thing that I thought it was about before I told my girl like that's what the song is about. And I look it up and I, I'm, I'm reading these anecdotes about how back in the day they would have to like go play these rock festivals in order to get their music heard because it was so hard to like, you know, get new fans at the time. You basically just had to play these like rock festivals for like radio stations and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess sometimes the like wacky shock jock DJs would be like interviewing Ben Folds 5 right afterwards or like while they're on stage and they'd be like, so uh, what was the name of the girl who got the abortion? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that loose dame? So you're trying to be this like dark brooding band. <laughs> Did they leave the fetus under the Christmas tree? <laughs> I, just, I thought that was like the funniest mental image ever. Yeah, and Ben Folds too. I saw he's just like a like a fucking nerdy little dude. It didn't look like he had much sense of humor. And Ben Folds five. There's three guys. It's true. Oh, that's retarded. Bullshit ass name. It was probably Adam Carolla who was interviewing him at one of those festivals. Can you tell that I've completely stopped listening to rap lately? And I'm, I, well, no, that's not true. I've been listening to old rap and I've been listening to fucking punk and like alternative rock that I used to listen to in high school and just not listening to any new rap. I don't know what happened. Maybe I hang out with you too much. Some, some blonde bitch was warning me about you. Was she? No. Okay. She I'm was just... warning you about me, but. Oh yeah, I, I oh yeah, that Sandrine, yeah, dude. I um, uh, it's we got to get back to our roots, you know. It's like you and I, our people, we pack into clubs and we listen to a guy with pit stains play power chords. How about That's what we do? We start a band. What what could be better to promote the podcast than if we started a band? Sledge Lords. It's fucking. It's great. already the best band name ever. And we're a three piece for sure. Mike, you play an instrument? What? You don't have the look, dude. You look too clean cut. Drums, bass, and guitar. He's, he's the kid rock of this fucking group. He could sing as well. I would like to have a no-show role in the band. Like, I'm on the podcast, and I maybe go to the shows, but I don't actually, like, get on stage or do anything. What's the equivalent to that? Like, what band Like, has if you're in the mafia, band? and they give you, like, a construction job where you, like, get paid and you don't have to go? Yeah, but that... Uh, uh, is there, like, a musical analog here? I think, logically, I should be the singer, since... I mean, like, what the fuck else am I going to do? I mean, I feel like maybe I could learn to play bass. That doesn't seem that hard. Well, I mean, if it's Sledge Lords, if it's based on this this setup we have here in the room. To have a vocalist who's not me or you, you would be, be strange. The <laughs> You're the singer. You're the face. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guitarist. I'm the Johnny Marr. I'm the Jimmy Page. I'm the Keith Richards. I think Sid would look pretty good. Ooh. On bass, she would look good on bass. I was gonna say she'd be the singer, but that's Adam. And then, no, but I noticed that like MGK, I'm looking through TikTok and I see that MGK's guitarist for his new tour, this girl, because I think he has like different people from the band at different times, but she's cute. She's got millions of views on this TikTok about being his guitarist. Couldn't you see Sid doing that? Sid, and we're gonna we're gonna pull a Sid Vicious. We're gonna have somebody backstage that could be her name. actually playing Sidney the bass. Sidney Vicious. Oh, Sidney Vicious. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> And just like him, you won't have to actually play bass. Mike, you're, we're sticking your ass behind the drum set, okay? Uh, the the earrings, the Arizona Diamondbacks hat, you're too, like, douchey. Come on. I have dude. no reason to believe that I could sing in any way, shape, or form. You don't have to. It's punk. Is it, though? You just go... Rah, 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 rah. No, but I, I want to just sound like Weezer, dude. You can't hit those notes that Rivers hits. I don't think I could hit any notes. I don't even think I could do the screaming thing either. When I used to like go to hardcore shows, I would blow my voice out just from singing in the crowd. I don't think I have a voice that's ready to like perform even what, once. What if we do a Rage Against the Machine, a Red Hot Chili Peppers, <laughs> and you're just like rapping? You're just like fucking... Yeah, and that's I'm what like, I think of. Yeah. I think of rage. Yeah. I'm, I'm just downstroking a a chords. Fucking just downstroke the a to b. See, that's one weird thing. I feel like influencers should start bands. Why don't they do that? They all used to make these stupid fucking music videos. Like if Logan Paul started a band, he could be bigger than MGK. I don't know if I believe that, but maybe he could give him a run. They possess many similar attributes. Yeah, they're both from Ohio. Logan should probably lose weight. I feel like the amass, the the like wayfish look is probably better for. It, a, it'd be way better for a band. He can't be buff like it, that. He's got to stop the boxing thing. Like no, those yeah, that's two not are, cool, yeah. they're mutually exclusive. He's got to. Um, I want to see Mike Majlak playing lead guitar. 
<laughs> uh, dude, our band will be so much better than theirs. I mean, look at those fucking guys. We got to look way more than they do. I mean, how hard could it be to learn to play a random fucking instrument? Get some guys to write you songs on Fiverr. Dude, uh, we'll have uh, AI do it. A fucking punk band? Are you kidding? It's the easiest shit ever. Mm. A fucking it's th- dude. The Ramon songs are three chords. But if we want to be accepted for reasons besides our massive podcast fame, we should probably really get in there and make this shit hot. Dude, you and I, we could put out Pinkerton. We could put out OK Computer. A cover record. Or Kid A. No, like, I'm talking, like, if you and I, like, tomorrow. What if we're a cover band? We just do all our favorite songs. But if, if uh, the four, I'm telling us right now, we are so canceled that if the four of us put out a record, like, Funeral, as good as Funeral by RK Fire. I like Fire, how Michael is in this just because he's in your peripheral right now. That's that's it. Yeah. Uh, fucking uh, Bossa can run the light shows. But, Bossa just has it, to be involved with everything. It wouldn't be. He's the, the guy. He's our trim. We fuck him backstage <laughs> and he runs the lights. No, you know but how the you, there's a guy you send out into the crowd to find all the cute girls? Trim coordinator. I feel like, yeah, that, that could be. That could be Is that Nova. what you just said? Trim coordinator. God yeah. damn it. No, no, I'm saying he's our trim. Oh, I'm saying right. we just fuck him. <laughs> and we're like, fucking, I don't know. Maybe Trev could be our. But the mainstream establishment, it wouldn't matter how good our music was. That You know how it is. There's like the politics of art now. If you have the wrong ideology, you will never get accepted by the mainstream. And that's why MGK has a female fucking bassist or whatever. Yeah, that's he's on the right track. He's inclusive. He's like gets a little I, too much pussy. I bet dollars to donuts. There's like a indigenous person in the band. He should work on it because I guarantee you right now all of his albums are just horribly reviewed. But if he has an indigenous keyboard player mm-hmm. and if he has a black transgendered midget drummer, we're gonna start seeing him get nominated by Pitchfork for album of the year. That's how it works. Yeah, I can see it. That's how it fucking works. And that's why Logan Paul also is gonna need a, a little person in the group. <laughs> I saw you hanging out with some little people with uh, Danny Duncan. I yeah. click on a random Danny Duncan video, and then all of a sudden, Danny Mullen is in the video naked. Uh, mind blown, huh? You're like in a house just breaking stuff. Yeah. It, re- it reminded me of like when I was a kid, there was this one news story that went super viral about like a bunch of kids my age who just went into some random abandoned house and filmed themselves just breaking shit and smashing the windows and spray paint on the inside. And I remember being like a young ass kid and just seeing this and being like, oh, okay. So I definitely should not do that if I, if I, especially the filming it part. Like it was a huge viral story. And then I'm watching this Danny Duggan vlog and I'm thinking to myself, this is literally exactly the same thing. But did, was there some kind of ownership of the house or was there a reason for him to believe that he wasn't going to get in trouble for this? Um, the lady who owned the house was very old. <laughs> and uh, no, no, he owned the house. Oh, he sorry. owned it. It was a business that he owned. And so we went in and we just smashed it up for a little bit of content, you know? And I then, was just out the, there for a couple hours. Is this like a little impromptu, like, rage room type thing? I think it used to be his jujitsu room, I'm pretty sure. And then, he, But he was re- revamping it, so he figured he could destroy it in the yeah, meantime. See, it, that if you're a YouTuber, that's like... The, that's like elite YouTuber skills right there is to be on the lookout for times where you could just have an opportunity to break some stuff for some yeah. content. I, I think you guys were naked on a motorcycle together. I'm sure your balls were at risk. You know, it was dangerous. We were jumping too. Your dick was touching his back and or butt crack. And I'm proud of it. You know, it was touching a very top tier YouTuber. I'm starting to really believe oh, your intentions for. Uh, Jason Ellis might be pure. I uh, will. T- I'm telling you this right now. Della Hiva guard to dick suck. How does right. that sound? But I don't see you getting naked with your squad. You're just getting naked for the cloud. Huh? Dan Duncan really brought that what, out of what you. What are you huh? talking about? He's dude? got enough followers that you'll what, get nude. Dude, what are you talking? You think I never pull out my wee wee in my videos? Not enough. Dan Duncan says, "Hey, pull it out." You're like, oh, "I'm down." I, uh, well, we, we need were... Danny Duncan, Danny Mullen, and Danny D in the same room. Oh, fucking! It would be the perfect like. Me, the lowest man in the totem pole, cocksized. Wise. Perhaps he will then go gay Danny for you. Duncan, yeah, and then Danny. Did you know Danny D's bisexual? There we go. He doesn't even have to go gay. I don't. I didn't know that. It was actually. I was a little bit disappointed because I held him up as this archetypal macho man, and then I stumbled across a clip of him fucking a guy up the ass. I gotta look at him right now so I can make sure that I don't like not know who I'm looking at when I see him at the. the oh yeah, thing. he's he's pretty hilarious. He's uh. Oh, and I, uh, I, I feel like I've met him before anyway. And I, I basically stole this sweatshirt from one of the staff members out there. What's her name again? Oh, yeah. This, Brent, she's so sweet. I mean, this guy stands out like a... Hey, yeah, he's got a very, very on distinct 1025 look. on Instagram. She gave me a hoodie. I, oh, wow. I just saw the picture you were talking about. 
of Danny D fucking a dude? It might be Danny D uh, receiving from a dude. But yeah. Oh, he's receiving? Yeah, it seems to be what's going on there. 35 years old. Okay. Shout out to him. Hey, yeah. he's, he's on Instagram. Yeah, oh, but, yeah. I'm, I'm not even following. 437K on Instagram. Hey, Bryn, uh, what do you think about this hoodie? Is this hoodie pretty fire? Bryn has hooked me up with gear in the past as well. Yeah, her shit's dope. Dude, I, gotta, that's, I need some more uh, some more swag, dude. Like that, why, why don't I have that hoodie you're wearing right now, too? I feel like we only had so many, and we kind of got rid of them pretty quick. Damn, see, I love I love the Instagram accounts of porn dudes. Because, like, this guy just got a pool. You just take pictures with these chicks next to the pool, day in, day out. Would you want a cock as big as Danny D's? Yes. He would? In, in my ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that can be arranged. <laughs> Apparently. Damn, you do a mad Pornhub photo shoots and shit, too. Damn, he's a serious fisherman. That's a big fish. Yo, he's like into like giant fish with his giant dick. Like, uh -huh. this is like, there's got to be a parallel there, right? I don't like it when porn performers have hobbies. Lots of fish. I don't like, like I feel plenty like, of fish. That's that's a big fucking fish. Plenty of fish.com. That's like the biggest fish I've ever seen. I like, I don't like it. I feel like, uh, I don't like it when I want a porn performer to stay in his lane. I was just giving Sky Bree the opposite advice because I was, she'll post like her playing with Legos on her close friends, and I'm like, I think that's good. Like, put that out there for your, like they, I think they like to know that you're like an actual person and that you do normal human things. For chicks, yes. For guys, I want them just to be robots. Mm. Because like, if Danny D's like, if he's out there catching largemouth bass, okay. Before, I'm, as a as a porn performer, Michael, I think he just farted, or his shoe moved against He's the floor. He's on his shoe. As a porn performer, performer, like the, there's a character that you go into once you start filming, right? Where the girl essentially wants nothing more from this experience than to just beg for cock, to like pray for you to spit on her face and get you know this like they take on this character that obviously like nobody exists like this on mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day basis you know like angela white goes to subway and gets her gets herself a little meal mm -hmm. and she does porn and she's begging for everybody in the room to shove their cocks down her throat it's just you know it's not she, real life it's and then a, she goes home she follows danny mullen that's real life sure and uh as a dude same thing as soon as the camera goes on you don't laugh you don't you don't cough, you don't sneeze, you don't you don't pray, you don't think about your family life. Do girls actually pray for cum these days? Perhaps. But I'm just saying, like you don't do like your your range of emotions once the camera's on in a porno is very limited. Yeah, yeah. You're basically meant to look like a wild animal, mm -hmm. a lustful mm -hmm. beast. Now, as a porn fan, you can choose if you want to just consume the porn content or if you want to follow Danny D on Instagram and watch him hold up a fucking three foot long <laughs> fish. What if it's, I don't what know. if we need to, but it would be totally inappropriate for him to start talking about his love of fishing during a shoot, you know, like as soon as the camera turns off, he could start saying, Hey, Adam, Lena, I like fishing, <laughs> <laughs> but during the shoot, it's not allowed. <laughs> what if, would you pay to watch Danny D take one of those fish to a cabin and face fuck it. <laughs> Have you seen dudes bang fish on the on the internet? I've seen I've, a, seen, I've seen a frat boy put his dick in a fish's mouth and the fish is still alive. And it's like <sighs> eating his dick. There was one time I remember where like I was we were doing a jam at some sort of like uh skate park or something. This is up north. This might have been in Sacramento, to be totally honest. And on this road trip, I kept talking about this video of a dude that I had seen fucking a fish, right? <laughs> And I, kept, I just kept talking about it over and over and over. And finally, one of the dudes on the trip is like, Adam, pull it up. Show me. Yeah. Show me the video. I pull it up. I'm showing him. And he just screamed. And keep in mind, we're at a skate park. There's like hundreds of kids there. Kids. And this dude screams. He grabs my phone. He screams. Oh, my God. This dude is fucking the shit out of this fish. <laughs> and he starts showing people. But I have to run over. I'm like, no. I jump between them. I'm like, bro. We are here. It wasn't for my brand. We're like, we're here on behalf of a, a business. If you start showing everybody the video of this guy fucking a fish. <laughs> Was he fucking its vagina? No, it's mouth. Okay. Does a fish have a vagina? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Well, no. I think they uh, the, the chicks, they lay eggs. And then the other male fish come and fertilize the eggs when they're in the riverbank. That's hot. But whatever, whatever hole that egg comes out of. I mean, that's fair game, right? I just felt like we kind of dodged a bullet because if he's showing all these random Sacramento youth, let's just say, 
a video of a man fucking a fish. I mean, it's easy to imagine that the news might just call that straight up bestiality. Yeah, they yeah. might not acknowledge the, the the humorous aspect of it, yeah. right? They interview. They're like, "We're here at Siri Skate Park with KCAR thirty seven. Uh, uh, Timmy, what did you see on that man's phone? I've never seen a worm that looked like that. <laughs> it's possible. Oh it's po God. and then that would have been bad for the brain. That would have been bad. Yeah. And I mean, at a certain point. Do, do you 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 don't remember the time when we were uh, on the news for bunny hopping the homeless? You told me about this. Oh yeah, okay. And, and that's I mean that's the first time I ever really went viral. It, it's it's bringing awareness to their cause, and I mean that we should uh, shouldn't we as a nation be trying to get people off the streets and by bunny hopping over them? Yeah, it discourages them. Yeah. It's letting them. It's reminding them that there are risks and that they need to get back to the world of shelter. I think we did them a favor. Let me let me consult with my notes. Do you have any other uh, topics that we want to hit before we wrap this up? Not much, man. Mm. I had a mellow winter break. Yeah. My dad had COVID, so I was just hanging at home. It was raining the whole time in Sacramento. Mm. I um, just laid back. Laid back. I, I can no longer jog. I was telling Michael this before the show. I've uh, I've officially, my lower back cannot take jogging anymore. So, really? So, yeah, it's, it's purely. So you're over it forever, or you're just forever. taking a break? I'm done from jogging. Uh, and it's jujitsu and it's a Peloton bike. That's all I can do. For Were now. you that into jogging before? I love jogging. I've been jogging since I was a boy. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's it's like um, literally and metaphorically running from my problems. A lot of doctors, like in the past, I've mentioned because I used to be a, a jogger. I would jog, huh? run even. Yeah. Sometimes I would go into a full blown run. Yeah. When you're trying to show up that douche who won't say hi to you in your neighborhood. Yeah, I don't know. This is way. This is like ten years ago. But I would go out and you know run a good five miles sometimes. You know, jogging, keeping the pace going the whole time. And over the years, yeah, my lower back just does not appreciate it, and I just had to leave it behind. And multiple different times, I asked doctors, and I looked it up on YouTube, and I realized that there's a lot of people who would advise you against making jogging your your hobby. Yeah, it sucks, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I've done irreversible damage already to the knees, to the back. It's just like fucking. Like, I'm tired of – recently, my girlfriend was telling me that kale is now considered bad for you by the dietary establishment. Kale. And if kale is the new hot dog, Imagine what where they the would fuck say about are we going to go? Yeah. Exactly. Like, if, if fucking quinoa and baked beans are the new cigarettes and whiskey, am I going to gnaw on grass clippings for the rest of my days? If jogging is now the equivalent of having unprotected anal sex with an AIDS victim. I watched this video of this dude who did David Goggins' like daily routine where David Goggins lost like 90 pounds in 90 days or some shit like that. Every day he's doing like eight hours of working out. He eats, he does like three hours of working out fasted in the morning. Then he eats a banana. Then he does like throughout the day, maybe like four or five hour, more hours of work. It was fucking insane. And then he eats like one real meal at like 6 p.m. And apparently through doing this and consuming like 900 calories a day or so, he was able to lose a pound a day. And in a way, looking at that, it does kind of make me feel like you've been taking this whole weight loss thing like a real bitch. Because I've just like established a sort of moderate calorie deficit that has been working out very good for me because I'm averaging like six pounds um, – a month for like the last five months but then watching that video i'm like oh so you're telling me that i could have just had like a brutal couple of weeks and i could have lost all this weight probably put my health and my my life really at, on the line guy, but is this guy independently wealthy or is he broke because who has time you know to david work goggins for, no i know david goggins oh, yeah. you said somebody copying his routine, yeah it's, it's like a pretty popular youtuber will something i forget his name oh, i'd like what, to interview him he's somebody, got youtube tell him I want to interview him. i know that that's the only people more worthless than the independently or the uh, inherited wealth or the unemployed or the fitness, youtubers fitness youtubers it's the worst and <laughs> who, uh, who spend their entire life thinking of like weird thumbnails so that they can kind of do little experiments dude on themselves. i'm gonna go out and challenge people to push up contests at venice <laughs> beach his shit's pretty good though it's like thoughtful he like finds like weird diets that people have been through been on throughout history and he's like does those diets and lets you know how he feels but what's is this guy what's this guy's name will something i'm gonna uh, find will, it right uh, do us all a favor I, i've really been wanting this <laughs> this is a request from yours truly uh go bulimic the bulimia <laughs> diet for 30 days uh, I'm dying to see that video we're done we're, we're banned we can't tell him to do that. <laughs> i'm just i'm basically telling will this guy. tennyson 
Will Tennyson, that's what I want to see you do, dude. I want to see you binge eat and then purge yourself. And I want to know the, the pros and cons of such a diet. I'm going to give you like other recent titles. I survived country's oldest versus newest gym. So he goes to like a crappy gym and then a nice gym. I personally think that title is grammatically kind of weird, although it has 858,000 views, so I guess that's good. I kind of like what he's going for. One rep max competition at public gym. 24 fitness dares in 24 hours. I tried the world's most shredded kids bulking diet. I trained with America's strongest man for 24 hours. I traveled to the fittest city in America. You get it. I want to see this guy go out to Venice Beach. I know, I'm I see sure him, he's done some work over there. I want to see him go to Muscle Beach and get him to get the burliest guy to fist him. You know <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want him to go to Venice Beach that would be and a, get Ronnie Coleman's forearm up his rectum. That's my kind of fitness challenge. I think he might have to go to Texas to get Ronnie Coleman's face, <laughs> fist in there. But I like this. It's like how I went from obese to 8% body fat, and he has like a picture of himself looking like super fit, and then he has a picture that I would say is quite clearly uh, – modified in photoshop to make himself look super fat that would have been a scandal in the pre-youtube thumbnail era right he would have been smeared like milli vanilli and instead it's just totally accepted that yeah. in a you you know another trend i've seen with youtube thumbnails look at ludwig's channel look at a mogul male he'll it'll be like a brand is getting like in trouble or like getting dragged for something and he'll put a fake tweet in the thumbnail with that says like netflix we fucked up yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. know like that is the new thing is yeah, like it yeah. makes it seem like really dire and then you watch the little video and you're like ah they didn't tweet that that was just the general sentiment that you wanted to get across apparently that's legal now never would have thought of that yeah yeah, yeah. i know i know exactly what you're and then people were like elon musk is a neo-nazi and it'll be like elon musk tweeting fuck the jews lol <laughs> Yeah, and it's just like that's that's not what he said. He just just was advocating for free speech and making fun of Fauci or something. Yeah, I know he's not his your... pronouns. I know. Yeah, that was a fuck. That was a funny fucking tweet. Mm. I know you and I have differing opinions. I, on I think that the thing is, is that Elon Musk is in such a position of responsibility that a lot of things that might seem funny for you or I just seem like kind of dire from my perspective. That was fucking gnarly when he tweeted that Elon Musk when he tweeted the. Uh, my pronouns are prosecute Fauci. Yeah. I think the reason I like it is just to see somebody in such a high position in society uh, completely not concern themselves with how things are going to come off to the establishment or, is or just amazing or, and attractive. Really not concerning himself with the betterment of our society or the social platform that he now owns. Because to me, when we're talking about like making advertisers feel safe on the platform, wouldn't you say that it would benefit him to maybe not sort of sick his followers on Fauci? I feel like if I'm the owner of a Fortune 500 company, that's probably what I want to see mm -hmm. from Elon. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say I don't really care about the stock value of Twitter. <laughs> so that's yeah. not what I'm worried about. I like, And I can appreciate somebody who goes against their own best interests. Yes. Mm. And I mean, he certainly, it seems, done that with Tesla. But I, uh, I just like what he's doing. Hopefully it... It makes the other big tech companies shine a flashlight into the offices of their trust and safety bureaus and make sure there isn't a 29-year-old chick from Berkeley in there uh, putting her thumb on the scale and destroying free speech the, on YouTube The de-wokeification of Twitter is definitely something I can get behind. Yeah. And Destiny is now back on the platform. There we go, dude. The Omni-liberal is back. How, what, did, what did Destiny get banned for? Jerking off. I think he posted a video of him jerking off. Why did he do that? And also, isn't that allowed on Twitter? Hasn't that always He's been allowed? He's a horny guy. No, I'm just kidding. No, he... It was some, like, super not offensive statement about trans people. And he's pro-trans, right? But that's, like, why he's banned off Twitch, too, is, like, him having these, like, vaguely, like, contentious opinions about trans shit, even though he clearly is in, like, the top 1% of people who are open-minded and accepting of trans people yeah but still he's like essentially banned off two different platforms probably for that he when you ask him though like why he's banned off twitter he would never give you a straight answer he would always be like because he didn't really know yeah but he assumed it was related to the, the trans dialogue i do believe and dude that's sh that banning shit th that just makes me immediately become a contrarian like when it mm. came to covid vaccines when it comes to uh, defund the police, the, the election in 2020, whatever. Whenever you silence speech 
and act as if the the establishment has something to hide. I feel like that just fuels conspiracy theories and achieves the opposite of your desired outcome. But I, I think the reality is is that we live in a world in which so many people have the playbook of how to basically like intentionally spread disinformation, knowing that there are big audiences out there that are going to be drawn to it. And we saw this with the Tory Lanez trial. We've seen this with all with everything really, and like. I don't know. I just think that, like, if you're going to be a social media platform, it's pretty reasonable for you to think that there are viewpoints that are intentionally misleading and that it's worthwhile to do what you can to try to minimize the spread of those ideas on the platform. Maybe by adding context and having counter speech come out, but just banning, uh, uh, like... Do you think it's within Twitter's rights to ban Holocaust deniers or to silence that conversation? Mm. It's tough because Holocaust denial makes me think that the people denying the Holocaust are going to try to um, whip another Holocaust up, which immediately puts people in danger and real threats of violence or something that are like pretty universally condemned by people who are free speech advocates right so that one's a little sketchier to me but to me having questions about an election or the uh, effectiveness of a vaccine that's a little different because that just smacks of like when you like when you can't talk about an election that just makes me think about like a latin american dictatorship but when you really look at people who seem to be intentionally spreading doubt and misinformation about the election like the most important system that we have I don't know. I mean, I just think this is a unique time in history where the rules have kind of changed because there are so many people. And, and I agree when it comes to the vaccine, they probably silenced a fuckload of people who had valid concerns and criticisms of the vaccine. But I think it's like it's also very easy to look back on it now and say, oh, look at all these things that they got wrong. When in reality, in that moment, nobody knew what the fuck was going on. And it was like all these social media platforms were just kind of scrambling to like figure out in what way they could like get a con get get a grip on what was going on. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, it seems like... It's a tough one. It, it seems like some of the companies that were making the vaccines... And I'm not saying the vaccines, uh, listen, my dad just got COVID and I'm psyched that he was triple vaxxed and just had his newest booster shot. Fucking psyched. But I think there were some things like they might have known that just because you were vaccinated did not mean you weren't going to get COVID. But they I might have known things like that, not let those out. But see that early on when I, I remember listening to all the coverage of the vaccines early on and everybody was pretty confident that it was going to essentially like and your ability to spread it to other people. like, And yes. that ended up being very, very wrong. Mm -hmm. But also it's like, can you really blame journalists and scientists or whatever, or the journalists are trying to communicate the opinion of the scientific community, if that was expected to be the case? I mean, yeah, they got it wrong, but they were just trying to do what they could to you know, get that information out there at, at once. It, in a lot of ways, it just, when you look at how the pandemic went on, and this is a Sam Harris quote, but it seemed like a dress rehearsal for something much more serious. And we just absolutely fucking did the worst job imaginable at dealing with it in many ways. I think mm -hmm. shutting down the schools and stuff was, mm -hmm. well, but that, that turned out terribly. But also when I look back at it, I'm kind of like, it seemed like the reasonable thing to do at the time. And I don't think there was that many people that were opposed to it in that moment. Now there's a lot of people opposed to it and who look at it and can clearly see the negative ramifications. But at the time, it did seem pretty reasonable, right? I think there were people who knew that anybody under the age of, say, 40 who was in good health, and especially kids, were not at a high risk for dying of COVID. Mm. I think there were a lot of people who probably knew that and also knew they were going to make a shit ton of money if they could... Mm, I don't know, uh, talk people who didn't need necessarily a vaccine into getting it anyway. I think there was a financial upside in doing that. But just because you're not going to die because you're a young, healthy dude, to me, the vaccine still seems like a pretty easy uh, concept to get. That's true. I mean, I, I got real, I am not vaccinated and I got really, really fucking sick from COVID. Mm. I was for 14 days. I couldn't get out of bed. And part of the time when I was 
sick, I was like, I wish I would have gotten vaccinated. So this would have been a lot more mild. I wish I got boosted like a week and a half ago so that I would before I go to fucking yeah. Vegas. Oh, my God. The AVN flu. That's but, coming. But basically, also I just, known as AIDS. I <laughs> herpes. <laughs> I, I, dude, I'm just maybe this year. I just I, I don't like I have like a natural rebellious streak. I've always had it since I was, I'm sure you did, too. Mm. And that just whenever speech is getting shut down and and everybody in the media and in the government and in corporate America thinks one way, I just get paranoid and I start thinking the opposite way. I uh, that's just how I work. It's clearly very alluring to a large percentage of Americans. The contrarian identity. Yeah, that's me. I'm yeah. the fucking banner carrier for the contrarians. Whatever. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to convert you right now. Convert you over to the establishment. <laughs> me and destiny. Well, you are a Freemason, so uh, eventually, I'm sure it'll get done. Word on the streets. Uh, okay. Am I good for one final topic that I have here? Let's do this. Okay. I went to a party over the weekend. It was a kid's birthday party, and a few different things happened. And, you know, because I've, I've been kind of, like, sheltered away from, like, normal people. Because it's, like, a kid's birthday party. It's a three-year-old's birthday party. So I'm around a lot of parents and stuff, and I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what it's like to be a normal person that just goes around groups of people and has random conversations with them and mm-hmm. talks about my kid and my life or whatever the fuck they want to talk about, ask random people about their lives, et cetera. You know, and this is it's kind of foreign to me at this point. And um, so for starters, at one point, uh, a Little Mermaid impersonator shows up in the middle of the three-year-old's party. Is this a rich parent, rich family? I, I wouldn't say super rich, but, you know, they're, they're probably doing reasonably well for themselves. Yeah, because, I mean, you had a pony at Parker's birthday. Yeah. These people have a mermaid impersonator. When I had a birthday, we went to Chuck E. Cheese, okay? And right. we got our, our fingers singed on hot plates. That's right. what we got. Really, this though, is rich shit. at the end of the day, though, that pony, I'm pretty sure, costs like, I don't know, maybe like 200 bucks to get the pony to come through for an hour. Maybe less. It wasn't really that, like, it's creative, but it's really, I'm guessing that the Ariel impersonator, she was probably there for like two hours. I'm going to go on a limb and say that she got $100 an hour, maybe $200, maybe. How much extra did you have to tip her to jerk off in front of her? I didn't go for that. <laughs> but... It was weird because when she walks in, she's wearing like a nylon like bodysuit, right? Yeah. With with shells over her boobs. Did she have, you know, big tits? I don't know. But uh if she did, they were hidden within the shells. But That's... at first I think that she's actually walking into this party and it's fucking cold as fuck. Like uh... the sun is beating down, but it's cold. Very cold yeah. by LA standards. I thought that she was actually showing up looking like a little thotty with her boobs shoved into these shells. Turns out it's a <laughs> nylon bodysuit. And I'm thinking about how weird this thing must be for her because she's here to, you know put on this little performance and read these books and talk about her experience as the little mermaids, all these little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But meanwhile, she's got to show and prove because a, she wants a good review on whatever fucking site they hired her off to yeah. do this. And who knows, maybe that some of the dads and the moms who are at this party work in show business yeah. and could very easily see her and think, Oh, she would be great for a role in the new Avengers film. She yeah, did yeah. such an amazing job as the Little Mermaid. Or even me, I'm thinking about it from a different angle. I'm wondering, does Ariel do porn on the side? But you know, there might be job opportunities that could pop up from this. And so she's really trying to put on this like Was serious she act. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And then meanwhile, but the kids are like completely ignorant to what's going on. So the kids are just walking up in the middle of her fucking performance. And just, are you from the sea? <laughs> The kids are just walking up and just saying the <laughs> stupidest shit to her. And it was so fucking funny. Are you from the sea? And I'm just wondering, like, what is this fucking woman's life like that she had to get up at eight to get in and, and get her makeup done and, and come out here to just perform in front of all these children? Like this little mermaid impersonator. I don't know. I was just I was amazed by the whole dynamic. You know, it, that's actually a pretty good job, all things considered, especially that's. The fucking glass ceiling, the gender pay gap. Listen, dudes, <laughs> if you come out here to make it into Hollywood as a dude, they're going to hand you a mop and say, make the floor not sticky, you piece of shit. She's probably doing some mopping as well, but she's also the Little Mermaid on Saturday morning. I think she's doing pretty well on that. She might give a guy a shoulder rub up in Bel Air mm. for a little bit of money during a card game, too. Yeah. It's different. But that is really the tragedy of Los Angeles. You know, you come out here to make it in showbiz and... 
more likely than not, you're going to be uh, reading a book to a bunch of three-year-olds who don't give a fuck. I'm assuming that she probably has a lot of different wigs and that she can play a lot of different roles, right? Because if she throws on a black wig and some, some Middle Eastern garb, She's Princess Jasmine. Wow. You think they're still doing that? You think they're still letting a white woman play Jasmine? I don't know. Was she white? She looks a little ambiguous. I don't know. Maybe okay. she like changed her features so she could be whatever role. But also, like, I don't know. Like, is it better to just focus on the one thing? Because I, I do think she had an Ariel-esque face. Mm -hmm. She kind of did have like a mermaid vibe to me, but she could definitely like play all these different characters as well. I wish I got to see what she drove. Because that would have told me a lot about how profitable this line of work is. Do you think? If she's got a fucking Benz, I'll know. This is a line of work I want to get into. You know, I, I think we can safely assume that she is probably making a couple hundred bucks <laughs> yeah. per day of work, and she only works a couple days out of the week. Yeah. But I just, do you think, like, I think she is definitely promiscuous, <laughs> and I think there might have been. Based on knowing absolutely nothing about her, <laughs> she's a whore. I, you know, <laughs> I think I am w willing to go out on a limb and say there was still <laughs> semen on Ariel's molars when she was singing those kids' songs about the sea. Do you think that her career would be done if it was discovered that she had a Little Mermaid OnlyFans account? <laughs> Do you think Disney would shut that down? I think they would. Do you think she's licensed by Disney? Oh, she was well, she skirting around saying like, "Oh, I'm a mermaid. I'm a petite mermaid." I mean, she's, reading, like that. she's reading like a five dollar Little Mermaid <laughs> book to the kids. Like, you know, maybe she was reading the original Little Mermaid fairy tale, which has long since passed into public domain. You know, she, she can stay away from Disney, but I just, I mean, maybe the father. I think he'd be more inclined to write, to cut her a check. The book that she was reading was most definitely a Disney's Little Mermaid book. You know. That's but you know about all this shit coming in the public domain, and I'm not done with this party. But do you know about this that the original Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse character is coming back into the public domain very very soon? What are we gonna do about that? Winnie the Pooh. Also, that's why they made that horror movie about Winnie the Pooh. Oh wow, this is beautiful. That was done by like an independent director who that like, but it, it's very touchy now because it's like you can do the Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse character, but it can't like evoke disney in any way i forget exactly how the wording was used but basically like disney's probably going to go to war with anybody who tries to use mickey mouse in a way that like impacts the disney ip or some shit mm -hmm. it sounds like bullshit but I so don't know. so uh steamboat willy where mickey mouse has got his cock out the original superman too they're not gonna like that he's shit. about to be back in these streets uh yeah he's uh isn't he jewish i don't know mm -hmm. is he an alien Anything like Clark, I, like maybe. Why I, I think, think him being Jewish? a Jew at that time in the 20s would probably have been like unbelievably controversial. You're very right. You've never seen Superman with a fucking yarmulke. Well, why did I think he was, I don't know. But you're, 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 you're very racist. Right. It was but, a different um, time. But okay. And, and th this is the one final social scenario that I want to ask you how you feel about. So while I'm at this party, right, there's a guy and he's telling me about his weed brand. Oh, no. And he's basically telling me about how. The marketing for his weed brand is all about history, how he grows weed in this this very, very specific area of Los Angeles, uh, not of Los Angeles, but of California. And in this area, there's so much history and lore about it and how that's his goal with his weed brand is to use that history as marketing. And I said to him, I'm going to be honest with you, I feel like the weed consumer is one of the least clued in consumers in yeah. the world. And I've been involved with a lot of different subcultures. And so I've seen a lot of different levels of, of interest that the fans have. Like for instance, in rap, the fans are so interested in all of these rappers that they know like every single person that these rappers have had beef with. They know the intricacies of their dating life, like fucking everything. Like the fans just know everything. Meanwhile, when you look at even the top weed brands, I mean, we look at something like Cookies as something that has really like risen above everything else. But I would still say the average Cookies fan is not some burner fanatic. You know, the average, there's all these other weed brands. But when I look at the podcast with some of these weed brands that are like the top weed brands, uh, even the biggest podcast with them sometimes will be doing like 20, 30, 40,000 views. Like they're really like, and, and Consider like how many people smoke weed versus like how many people listen to rap. I mean, I would say it's like pretty similar. But meanwhile, like the biggest rappers do an interview and it gets 10 million views. Yeah. And the biggest weed brands are this tiny, tiny fraction of it because the average weed consumer is just not really like concerned with 
the history or the the technical side of weed. They really don't even care about what they're smoking. When you talk to people who work in weed shops, they tell you that the shittiest weed they have, the cheapest weed, is usually the biggest seller. Yeah. And so I didn't go into that much detail, but that was kind of my response is that that seems like a tough sell to make the extremely disinterested weed fans care about the history. In what city does he grow this shit in? I don't want to say, but... It's one thing if you're from Boston, Massachusetts, and there's <laughs> Benjamin Franklin on every spliff, or <laughs> the uh, the Boston Tea Party is taking place over the series of blunts, and it's like right. one blunt has a guy dressed as an Indian about to shove a crate overboard, the next blunt, the crate is in midair, and then the third blunt, the crate's in the water. That could be cool. It was like a flip book. This is all possible for sure. But I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I felt like I'm at this party. I should just have like real human conversations with people. But you're judging this guy on his hopeless marijuana. Well, product. it turns out that everybody, when you have real conversations with people in real life, that they tell you about their business ideas. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I would say if nothing else, I'm a pretty good hater i'm like good at like deciding what won't work yeah like that way i feel like i'm very strongly about like i don't invest in the stock market but i sometimes think that i really need to get into it because i sometimes think that i have a pretty good amount of trust in my hunches about different firms but is, is it over the line to tell this guy that you just like sort of generally don't believe in the marketing that he's telling you about i think your opinion on that subject matter because I mean, you're a guy with his ear to the ground when it comes to marijuana, street culture. I think it'd be very valuable. And also, I think he was telling you less to get your opinion on his brand and more he was just telling you to feel important. So I think you knocking him down a peg <laughs> would be good for him as a person, too. I didn't want to knock him down a peg. Yeah, he's a guy who sounds like he deserves to be knocked down a peg. Ah. <sighs> And, yeah. and also, do you get this too? Uh, this is for me because we're podcasters and we're sort of like comedy adjacent. It sounds like I'm saying we're alt right adjacent. We're comedy adjacent. That's comedy adjacent sounds good though. I think that that is how I would describe it. If someone else, it's a comedy comedy adjacent podcast. Sometimes I get frustrated, especially when I'm home with my parents, who I love to death. But my parents have what been saying your shirt. I've been staring at this whole time. It's a staple, here. Cleveland staple. Browns, okay. dude. Just I was curious. Deshaun so. Watson, shout out. Sure. But uh, it's like when I'm talking to people in my hometown who don't talk into a microphone for a living, sometimes I want to wring their neck because there will be stories that'll be like, yeah, so I was hanging out with Tim and, you know, this guy Bryce. And he was like, you know, like he came up to me and he said that he met this girl and like he said that this happened. And I'm like, wait, who are we talking about anymore? Where is this story going? Is there a punchline? And oftentimes I want to turn on my heel and walk away mm -hmm. because people in Northern California lack even the most basic communication skills, especially my parents, who once again I love. Yeah. Like listening to my mom or my dad tell a story can be like, um, I, I don't know, getting you, lost <laughs> in a corn maze. Yeah, like because part of your brain just kind of thinks, what would this be like if you were telling this story on the podcast? Because the, yeah. the, the, the live stream comment section on this conversation that I'm having with my parents yes. would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes. Why are you telling this random story? This is not even interesting in the slightest. What the fuck? Because that's kind of like what's going on in my brain. And this is kind of like a general like impediment, like a disability that I've inherited from doing this much content because you start to think about everybody's conversation as if it needs to like sort of make sense within the realm of podcasting. But I do think that that is like a reasonable standard for you to hold people to. But I, I, I noticed this with my parents where they will just tell me the most bizarre long story. There, there's a member of my girl's family. We went to a, 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 a get together recently. And right before we went in, I said, I bet you that within the first 10 minutes of us seeing this person, they will tell us what they had for breakfast. <laughs> and it happened. As soon as we start talking to them. And it boom. wasn't concise either. You no. know, it, it wasn't <laughs> like French toast and bacon. And to make it even better, he started comparing and contrasting what he had for breakfast today versus what he would have had for breakfast in the 70s or the 80s. And I, I mean... I'm not mad at it because I kind of appreciate that I get to go into these dynamics where people are having these bizarre conversations that have no beginning mm -hmm. and no end and make no sense. And, but as a podcaster, you are kind of like, wow, yeah. like, what the fuck is the dialogue going on in your head that made you think that this was a good thing to talk about? That's kind of incredible. It, it makes you feel like a worse person because you, your opinion sort of has to go down a little bit <laughs> for Breakfast Man. 
and you don't you want to love everybody but yeah. it, is, it makes you realize how important of a skill public speaking is who said that i think warren buffett said that that's one of the best investments you can make is to go to a toastmasters or to take some drama classes just to work on your public speaking right. because imagine even if you work for a company even if you're just a programmer or, or, or a, an engineer, eventually, if you work your way up high enough, you're going to have to stand in front of a table of important people and share your idea or vision for the company. At some point, it's going to come up. And if you're a bumbling fool, uh, the engineering equivalent of, oh, yeah, uh, eggs Benedict, it was uh, in the 70s, I would have had sunny side up eggs and pancakes. <laughs> if, if your speech is the equivalent of that, people are going to write you off as a fucking dickhead. Yeah. But but most people, realistically, like in particular when they're spending time with their family, they're being held to like the lowest standard imaginable. As yeah. long as you don't abuse anyone at the family party or like spit in someone's face, you're pretty much good. Like pretty much every you're around your family. Yeah, they are giving you the ultimate pass. And a lot of times that's the other thing too is that you'll be having a conversation with this random person, and you sort of realize like they didn't get a lot of chances to talk to anyone. Yeah, at all. Yeah. This week. Yeah. This is really, and they don't maybe even really have much to talk about, but this is their chance. Yeah. You know, a lot of people work in solitude. So the family party might be like their one time to socialize. So they're just sort of letting it all hang out. Dude, my parents have been in COVID lockdown like for this whole time, basically. My dad's been working from home. They live out in the suburbs. They live out in the country. It's, that's part of the gig. Mm. They're not like you and I. There's a girl that my mom met a few times when I was in high school. Not anyone I ever hooked up with, so don't worry. But she called my family's house one time, summer after 12th grade, at like 11 p.m. maybe, like midnight, and this is before cell phones. That's a rude hour to call. She, she called, and yeah. uh, my mom was briefly woken up. My mom still to this day will say, so, you talk to that Kira? She likes to call late at night. She woke me up. Yep. <laughs> like, to, like my mom. How many years ago was it? This is, I was 18. So it was 21 <laughs> 20 years, years ago, ago. Like, my mom still yeah. she has no reason to be thinking about this person in any way. She's still that's just like she's like a comic. Yeah, she's got material, yeah, little yeah, yeah. material to work through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. a comic who's holding herself to much lower standards than actual comics. Yeah, let's be fair. it's like uh, it's like a comic who's still doing like. Uh, uh, in-law or golf jokes yeah yeah my mom too my mom used to be a special ed teacher and like she still <laughs> she got a, good, a lot of good retard tales <laughs> a lot of good I, that's seriously what she has <laughs> i could imagine she is like has endless retard tales yeah. and a lot of times they're pretty interesting yeah but that's and i love my mom to death but a lot of times it's when we're we there's a lull in the conversation she just launches into like it would be like if a 16 year old kid's on a date with a cheerleader and he's trying to get pussy and he just his mind goes haywire and he starts talking about skateboarding my mom does that with retards. <laughs> I had a beautiful moment when I was at Dave and Buster's in Northridge, which sucked. Yeah, yeah, and uh, place, dude. My, my mom was talking about uh, Tony Robbins. I back Tony Robbins. I'm you not going to talk shit on that guy. I, I don't care. But my, uh, I don't care about him one way or the other. But my mom just brought him up randomly and just goes, have you seen him lately? He must have gained 100 pounds. He's looking fat as hell. What? No, he's not. He, he does look bigger in some photos that she showed me that she started Googling. But I started laughing my ass off when she says it. And I'm like, pull it up. I want to see. Is he really fat now? Oh. And I look across the table and I see Josh and his uh, my sister, his wife, and their kids, and my girlfriend, or my fiance, Lena. And they are all looking at me and my mom in horror because, you know, They've raised these kids, not Lena, but Josh and Sarah, they've raised these kids to be like body positive, to not think that there's anything wrong with being fat, whatever. And then meanwhile, you have me and my mom taking delight in the idea that somebody got fat and just laughing about it and stuff and just being merry in somebody else's yeah. apparent misfortune, well, alleged it, misfortune. I don't even know this is true. But uh that made me like kind of understand myself too. My mom is kind of catty in a way that I never really thought about. Like she's she's a gossip. She oh, got it from her mom. All moms are. Like yeah. my mom loves talking shit about my sister's friends' siblings. <laughs> yeah, right. Like they're like my sister's best friend in high school has a brother who's a really bad alcoholic. Mm. And my mom loves talking shit about that kid. Right. Because it just means like that. 
I don't know why moms are like that, but it just to my mom, it means she raised a better son than this mm. other family. And to your mom, she because Tony Robbins is the guy like, get out there and do it. You have to, it starts with a positive mindset <laughs> yeah. first thing in the morning. My mom's taking delight in him getting fat because it's kind of like proving to her, look, the 22 mentality of being sort of a sloth yeah. is actually probably more sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Awaken the giant without. But you have to think about the communication style that our parents would have came up with because they didn't have the internet. To us, to just gossip about some random person that we know seems a little bit corny. You know, like why why are we even taking interest in this person? And especially if they're not like important in some way, it seems like such a bizarre thing for us to start having a conversation about them gaining weight. But from their perspective, they grew up with just like Johnny Carson on fucking TV and they might have some magazines or some comic books, but for the most part, what you if you're hanging out with people, if you're on if you're on a long drive with your friends, you're not all buried in your phone knowing about what Johnny Depp is doing. Yeah. You're having conversations about the people that you know. There was so much more gossip in my life in general when I was young, or just like conversations about other people because we didn't have the internet. We and especially with phones, we just we couldn't just grab this. Like, I'm gonna pick up my phone after this and I'm gonna see hundreds of people's opinions about me and my business before I even have a chance to fucking blink and not to mention all these different texts from all these different people that I'm actually like intimately involved with on a business level so to me like having that conversation does seem bizarre but to our parents I feel like that's just kind of de facto mode of communication yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I think we just we, we wrapped it up we summarized uh, we it. Our, our parents it, are fucked our parents are fucking <laughs> and we're better than them we're better at them and almost we have everything, yeah. but uh, we still love them to death. More media literate. We're much more media literate. We get our news from the Shade Room and the Federalist, not not whatever the fuck they're doing. The Federalist. The local paper. The Sacramento oh. Bee. Fuck that rag, The Babylon Bee. The Babylon Bee. Nah, that's a proper Bee. No, that's a Bee. That's a fucking Bee, dude. Sack Bee. Suck it, dude. Will be. You about to drink that coffee right now? Cold as fuck, but yeah, I think I'm going to... Late night. Oh, I got another podcast coming up in an hour or so. What did we just do? Did we do like two hours? That was it? Two hours? Feels long in Sledge World World. world. That felt like a fucking three hour Sledge Lord World, not Sledge World World. That's... Eventually we'll build a theme park. I am off to Porn World. Dude. Porn Island. Godspeed, dude. I can't wait to talk to you after this thing fucking goes down. I'm going to have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tell uh, Angela and Johnny I said what's up. (laughs) Thanks for the follow. (laughs) <laughs> hey, Danny said thanks for the follow. <laughs> Danny said thanks. No last name or anything. I like that. All right, Sledge Lords, appreciate y'all. Go watch our last couple episodes where we also did other good things. Wow.